Valken presents the Valken Debrief Airsoft Live Show, sponsored by Enola Gay and Elite Force. The Debrief is the most interactive airsoft podcast online, and it comes to you each week in glorious high-definition resolution. Enjoy many experiences, including our energetic hosts, interactive polls, special guests, live caller hotline, event announcements, and video premieres. And be sure to check out the Valken Alliance, which offers many benefits, including airsoft team sponsorships. The Debrief also broadcasts live from many locations worldwide, from California in the United States and all the way to Germany in Western Europe. It's also easy to get your Airsoft event on the show by just sending us a Facebook event link. And if you miss any broadcasts, you can catch the Rewind on SoundCloud or YouTube. And please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Now sit back, relax, and get ready for your Falcon Debrief. Hey guys, it's Chris from Manola Gay, and it's time for Vulcan Debrief Live. Hey everybody out there in TV land. Wait, no, this is not TV. It's <clears throat> Facebook. It's Facebook land. It's still live TV. Facebook land. Oh, and it's 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 Radio Land because we're a podcast as well. Yeah, yeah. It is the Valkyrie Debrief Airsoft Live Show, live show in airsoft, most budget, most people's. I mean, I just feel I feel like I'm bragging at this point, but it feels good. I like it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but we are not the longest running. Yeah, that's Gorilla, right? That's Gorilla. That's airsoft Gorilla. Radio. Gorilla has that record, so they're good to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, quick note: We are actually not broadcasting from the ranch this week. We are in an undisclosed location somewhere in the Rocky Mountain region at the official Valken we emergency are, bunker. We are in a bunker. We are. We're in a coronavirus bunker. Coronavirus can't get us here. Shh. Take that. It's like Beetlejuice. Don't. Cor- don't say it. Cor- too. Cor- 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 Did you cor- know the, the Beetlejuice, <laughs> uh, Betelgeuse, the star? Yeah. It's gonna go supernova soon, and it won't be there anymore. I, you know what that that tells me is that we need to. They need to reboot that movie. With Michael Keaton doing Beetlejuice. Yes, yeah. I know. Right? In honor of the star going off. I mean, you can't get marketing tie-in. That's that's synergy. Yes. I like that synergy. This is episode... 119. You said it. I know I did. <laughs> oh, you got me. Okay, 119. 119. I'm the Kaiju, the Supreme Commander of the Valken Alliance. This is Peltast. We're the debrief crew, giving you all you need to know about Airsoft, even though we rarely talk about Airsoft on the show. I know, right? So if you're if you're a new listener, new viewer... We are here to entertain. This is about Airsoft or people hanging out, not necessarily about Airsoft. That's kind of a, right. Kind of a funny thing to say. So thank you to all our live viewership. Welcome all of you. Thank you for our podcast listeners on SoundCloud. Oh, I forgot about that. 200. Big 200 followers on SoundCloud now. Thank you, guys. I know. Please that's, share. That was a, that's a big moment for us. We is. are becoming radio stars, and you're making it happen. Mm-hmm. Mm. So we have a tradition here of the overachiever of the night, which goes to the first Do person we, that comments in the live chat. I'm actually going to say from now on we don't announce the, the achiever unless it's someone other than Ethan. From now on, it's actually who beats Ethan into the chat, well, not the overachiever. Well, it's not William Soda <laughs> yeah. from Overwatch Tactics. Ooh, it was gotcha. Ethan Vaughn. Again, you can't beat Ethan. He, I, I don't know. He was in the chat before me. I don't even know how he did that. And if you are listening uh, on SoundCloud to our podcast and <clears throat> you would like to see our beautiful faces... Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, I do not understand or see our guests and actually see the show live. Just head on over to Facebook to the Valken Airsoft Facebook page Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can catch us live. Other than that, well, actually, there's one more place you can catch us live too. Where's that? Mondays, if you're in Europe. That's right. We have our European listeners where we premiere each and every episode Monday night. 7 p.m. Central European time. It's like 8 o'clock in the morning for us or something like yep. that. <laughs> I'm, I'll be ch- we'll be in there chatting away with you early in the morning with our breakfast because yeah. we love you guys. You can All the Europeans can catch us on the Valken Airsoft Europe mm. Facebook page. Come say hi. So all we, our European friends. Yes. Because if you're American <laughs> when you go into the bathroom and you're American when you come out, what are you when you're in the bathroom? European? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have a hotline here. Every once in a while we will open up the phone lines um, and allow guests to call in, but not tonight. 
No, um, not but tonight. you do want to jot it down. Area code 856-975-0650. If you'd like to call With in. how rowdy this chat, chat is, I'm surprised that they're just not calling to like vent their issues on their ride home on this line. Like, know, right? That's what I'd be using it for. Like, I'm just pissed off in traffic. I'd call and just yell at the hotline <laughs> for 10 minutes. Well, it's a good way. We, hear, we, we get a lot of uh, voicemails about events um, that they would like to be on the show or suggested topics or suggested guests. So, again, that number is area code 856-975-0650. And not being rude, I'm just welcoming people to chat because we love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, um, well, I mean, we already talked about SoundCloud. We Did, love our listeners. Is that our new graphics? Did you just throw that up there? That is pretty. Can that we get is. some thumbs up and likes? for? We have this wonderful production team. They don't get paid very much. They're mostly interns that we stole from UCCS. A lot of them are on coronavirus virus hiatus right now, <laughs> oh but we're getting good work out of them. So if you just show some love for them right there, it'd be really be a wonderful thing. <laughs> it helps us pay them less, which provides more content for you. So help in our pyramid scheme. Oh, speaking yes. of which, did we forgot to plug the best pyramid scheme in Airsoft? Nope. So we would go ahead and give them a plug because we I got to do okay. something here real quick. Because Valken Alliance, so you guys should be we're seeing it right now. We got yep. the graphics up. Okay, you're seeing it right now. So the Valken Alliance best pyramid. Sorry multi-level marketing scheme in airsoft works like this a couple of facebook pages they're open to everybody sign up for the alliance get on the page it's another way that you can share information about local events with your local groups then they sign up two people for the alliance and then they sign up two more downstream people for the alliance and suddenly you're working from home and a millionaire that's how it works right well at least in exposure bucks not so yes. much in real dollars so did I, did I get all that? What else we got we going did. on? We uh, did. We got to thank our sponsors. Oh, that's right. We have our wonderful sponsors. So first of all, we got Enola Gay. And they make, I think, everything. Lifestyle. Everything you want to look cool in Airsoft, they'll make for you. Except yep. for masks, I think, at this point. So they got Boom. They got Smoke. They even have some bags now, too. They got some sweatshirts, some rad shirts. And they got the gloves that Punk is just showing off to everybody. So is Soto as well. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, we got Elite Force. Um, you guys know them. They make like every kind of HK product and airsoft gun you could know. That new G18 hotness just came out. The new Mark 18 hotness just came oh, out. We're going to talk about a new hotness and later. You guys die. better stick around yes. for our last little, seg last little segment because we are we actually some... debuting an exclusive edition of no, a gun. Limited edition. Limited edition is exclusive. No, What's the difference between exclusive and limited? Exclusive means you can only buy it through a certain channel. Okay, so limited means that it's like a collector's item. There's only a limited run. So limited edition, yeah. and you guys all, I saw how crazy you guys went up when we talked about that beautiful, beautiful vector from Crytek, the, the Stormtrooper vector. Mm -hmm. This is about as cool. I think you yes. guys will like it. So please stick around for that. Anything else going on? Yeah, get in here, tag your friends, uh, share the show. Uh, we're up to about 20 live viewers. If we get up to 50 wow. Airsoft Innovations, We'll sponsor a reusable grenade giveaway. Reusable? If we get to a hundred, is it is it much cooler than that? How about we talk about that when we get there? We'll get we'll get to a hundred. Yeah, and then we'll so surprise. 50. <laughs> and the way it works, if we get to fifty live viewers, the more you comment in the live chat, that all goes into the AI three point shuffles every single comment. We paid the ten bucks for the comment shuffler program on Facebook. That's you right. can't get it because you don't have a Facebook show, but we have access to that. And. Mm -hmm. Due to high demand. In high demand? Yes. In uh, 2017, I did a blog. Did you? I did. They, it was uh, on the road blog. I didn't. Apparently, I didn't read it. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not that good a friend. <laughs> but we are bringing back the blog, but we are calling it the Valken Classified. That works on so many levels. I know, you know right? I mean? Airsoft like blog. Getting a little info. What kind of information are, are you going to be sharing on this blog? Is this is this insider uh, stuff? Well, is this basic stuff? Well, is right this... now, I'm, I'm writing... Uh, I finished uh, two blogs. One is uh, about BB weights, mm -hmm. which BB weight is right for you for the application. Um, I did another one where uh, the art of precision for a BB to actually talks about how we get our Valken Accelerate Pro Match BBs to precision grade the whole process from start to finish so this sounds like very informational yeah it's very player. informational and then the um the next one i'm thinking uh you know actually educate folks on what pla is what's pla it 
No, no, no. no. You, tell, you tell me in the article. I was, yeah, prompt, I was you prompting article. you to tell me in the article. Yeah, you have to, you have to you go You to just article. say you have to read the article. I'm not telling you now. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> You're off your game today, man. <laughs> I know, right? So who do we got in the chat? I it's mean, stacked right now. I see oh, we, man, got we got Greg got... and Joe Mini and Cade Yates. Timmy oh, Green, our Beast? regional commander. Jamal Johnson is in here. Also, the legendary Cade Yates. So we got all of Cost Command team with us we right got now. We in the house. Puddin's here. Oh, Ace and Yates. Where's the rest of the Aces, man? Bring him I in, know, right? Bring him in. Hey, um, Twig Humphrey out in the Midwest. Yeah, who Watching. else we got? Chad Holtz from eight seven eight with his collection of militaria vehicles that are on his field. Too tall, Tom. Oh, did the legendary Tom sneak in here? I didn't see it. Hey, what's up, Mike Nation? I have to say, Tom is, might be one of my favorite guests we've had on the show. He is every time I get to talk to that guy, I it know, just right? blows my the back of my cranium out with information that I can't you know contain. He's uh, a Bill great guy. Miley is joining us again. Um, man, we, are we Kylie Hyatt out in Arizona? Speaking of which, Kylie, since you're actually listening, please make us part of your host on your Facebook post for when you do your charity games and all that stuff. I want to promote them. Everybody I talk to who goes to your games loves it. You do it for a good cause. Please include us so we can promote your stuff because you got a thriving community out there that you guys are supporting, yep, supporting, yep. and we would like to help support that. Mike Nation says the show is so much better live. It is. Thanks, Mike. I say it's not I even worth watching that. if you can't catch it live. You should have the full experience. <laughs> Unless you're on SoundCloud. Then it's a completely different experience on SoundCloud. Oh, did you mention Jared Abernathy? He's watching? I did not. Hey, Jared, Tim Green up? from Midwest Region. I mentioned that. Speaking of which, it, I, I got something that I discovered this week. It's called Kabaddi. If you guys haven't heard about this, this is the, I mean, I may have gotten the name wrong. This is the coolest sport I've ever seen. It's seven on seven, and you try to run across the other side of the field and tag the opponents before they tackle you to keep you from getting back across your line. Here's the best part. You have to hold your breath the whole time. It's the best sport I've ever seen. I'm obsessed with it. I'm really? moving to India if we don't have leagues of this in America soon. It's cool as hell. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm so excited. I might actually quit Airsoft to go professional for Kabaddi. If that's a thing. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, are you? What are you doing in there? Are you I'm just tacking, sharing. Are you sharing already? I'm sharing. You're sharing. This is. Are you this sharing is... your feelings, or are you just sharing the show? No, I'm sharing okay. to the Falcon Alliance <laughs> page and to all these other pages. So we got anything else going on? We have a guest today, don't we? We do. Did we talk about that? Not yet. We've just ignored that whole portion. We were in our own own little world and bubble here. I know, right? So, yeah, we got a good guest this week, if you guys don't know. Yeah, we're going to be talking with Rich Forsyth, the owner of Trooper Clothing. I have such a patriotic like feeling right now. Like I feel it's only going to get worse as we go farther in the show that I'm going to just turn red, white, and blue after we see the amount of flags I've, that are going to be in this show. I think. I, th I think this is going to be the most patriotic show. I would say if you don't ever. stick around, that means you don't love America. <laughs> I, I'm throwing that gauntlet down. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, I, I, and you know, if you still don't stick around, I'm going to tie this to 9-11. I'll do it. You caused 9-11 by not oh watching God. the show. That's how it's going to With that being said, <laughs> we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Share the show in your groups, on your personal page. Tag your friends. Get them in here. We're going to have a, a great talk. Um, Trooper Clothing makes apparel that is an exact copy of military uniforms across all service branches just in a smaller form for our like, youth. For like kids. smaller humans? Like yes. Not, so if you were like an adult human. Oh, like smaller humans like uh, Bo Silva. Yes. yes. And, it, and if you were a, a normal, <laughs> an adult human that for some reason did not grow to adult sizes. Like Bo Silva. Like Bo Silva. This, <laughs> this would square you away. Is he in the chat right now hearing this? Or are we no, just gonna, he, this going to be secondhand? I'd be, throw this down? I'd be surprised. <laughs> like JP needs to get in here and then JP needs to tag him. It's like, get your Well, because JP's in here. just going to rip off all our jokes and say it to him the next time they're drinking beer. You know that's why he <laughs> know, watches right? the show. <laughs> so we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. What's going on, guys? This is Soto from Overwatch Tactics, and you're watching the Falcon Debrief. No? Yes? Maybe so? This is the Valken Key Mod Handguard System. This key mod system can be used on a variety of airsoft accessories and includes a mil spec barrel nut, a barrel nut wrench, crush washer, and hex tool. They have ultra lightweight construction made of an aluminum alloy, and there are mounting points on the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions for key mod accessories. They are also ergonomically slim and sleek with a smooth textured matte finish. 
The 20 millimeter Picatinny top rail has numbered increments and they come in both 10 inch and 12 inch lengths. Thanks for watching and please leave a review to tell us what you think. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Falcon Debrief Airsoft live show episode number. Hold on, I, I think I have some coronavirus in my eye. I think it's, I don't <laughs> know what it is. <laughs> 119. See, coronavirus is even affecting the show. <laughs> oh my goodness. By the way, real quick before we get to our guest, just a quick public service announcement, guys. If you're not feeling up to snuff, stay home. Don't go into big, you know, don't go out to the game day in big crowds and shake everybody's hands and lick their guns and stuff like that. Just common sense, wash your hands, don't panic. And this is directly from the CDC. Really, you should be just doing two things every day. Wash your hand for at least 20 seconds with soap and water. And when you have to sneeze or cough, sneeze into like a handkerchief or tissue. No, that doesn't work. Is that not, what's, what are you supposed well, to do? Supposed if, to be the... No, if you, if you sneeze or cough into your shirt or something. So is the sleeve, official, because they change the technique. No, because what if you bump up and rub up against somebody? Okay, so it's the hand is the preferred covering now? But you want a, you want a disposable tissue so you can throw that away. Well, no, I trust you because your wife like used to do this yeah, for she years was and years. And years. She, she so keeps like, beating me up about Because I remember health. they used to tell you to cough like this in your arm because it provides better coverage. But if they change the advice, I want to keep up on what's going on. You know, things change. Yeah. Science is cool. True. It's cool. True. So without further ado, let us introduce our guest of the evening. L man, the man, I'm the myth, the legend. No. I don't know. Is he a legend? Maybe maybe to his wife, Jenny. But Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rich Forsyth, owner of Trooper Clothing. Man, he's, he, he's got a beautiful hearts, head. Hearts right now. Hearts, thumbs up. All the love Thank for you. this gentleman for taking like three to four hours out of his evening to spend time with you guys. Oh, do you didn't know this show goes till time, buddy? <laughs> you, you thought this was just a short interview? Point? 10 no. Pacific time, so that's 11, 11 o'clock. You know. Hope, hope you no, peed that's, before that's we started. Midnight. Texas yeah. time. I appreciate you guys having me on. Oh, welcome, um, brother. Awesome to meet you, man. How you doing? Doing well, doing well. Thank you. So from so, this... Oh, you want to start? No, well, okay. so if anybody watching has a question... I for Rich part. or for us, just put it in the live chat. We will see it. We will relay the question to Mr. Rich. Uh, oh my word! Is there any goodness in there? Oh, my chat froze. That's why. I'm, is there? Is there people talking? Pocket about Robo it? is actually watching, and he actually says, "Cough into your elbow." So he is. That must be the correct thing. Because Robo? Pocket Robo is. 100% always correct. Wait, wait. Is this the is this a new name for Robo? Or is this a separate person that I don't know? No, this is the intelligent AI version of Robo Murray. He, he, they've copied him? Yes. They've made him stronger? He's pocket Robo. We have the technology? We do. Okay. Well, <laughs> we do. So, Rich, <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing a little uh, I'm hearing a little drawl there. Are you a Texan, sir? Indeed, I am. Yeah. I'm born and uh, raised here in San Antonio. Oh, wow. Uh, Texas. Uh, lived in Houston for... Uh, a little while, but uh, yeah, I consider uh, San Antonio home. So, would you call you? Is that a San Antonioan, a San Antonioite? How, what is that? Yeah, whatever you want to call. It. I've been called worse, but uh, yeah, San, San Antonio. Antonio it sounds Ooh, good. A San Antonio. I like that one. That, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so, does does that mean you're a football fan of one of those Texas teams down there that no one likes? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, there's only one real team, you know. The Cowboys uh, continue to lose every year. So. Ooh, I like so how you get on board that. with a winning program, and that's the Houston Texans. Oh, I like that lead in. Like how, like how he goes. There's only one team, the Cowboys, and then there was like a pause there, and then there was like they can't seem to win a game. Like he got like the he he knows about this. I feel like he's done this before, you know. I, know, right? <laughs> I am totally not in the chat. What's going on? No, here? I monitor the chat. You? No, I know, but I normally I want to see. All right, I won't. I'll look away. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Robo Murray says Rich is the man. He is the man. Hey, so, Robo, good to hear from you, buddy. So you've been around for a while. Uh, are you an airsofter or you are the, and how you came into this world? Or are you someone who has come into it from like the third party place? I, uh, I came into it uh, from third party. Uh, there's been a few, uh, there's been a few guys that have, uh, Kind of talked to me. Uh, actually, the original was uh, Jay Irwin. Name uh, drop. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Name wait. drop. Yeah. That, that doesn't and happen to be a, that Jay Irwin in the chat that's just spamming everybody, is it? He's uh, 
he's been instrumental really in getting us involved in the air, airsoft industry as well as uh, guys like Robo and and Rob and you know a lot of the others Soto uh, there's there's quite a few that have reached out and given us uh, Jay a has... lot of insight with the industry <laughs> but uh, no I don't I don't play <laughs> So oh, for those that are see watching or uh, listening for the first time, uh, Jay Irwin, a.k.a. Woodcock, uh, is my BFF. And I, I would say he's done a very good job um, at promoting trooper clothing through the exploit of his son Stone. I was about to say, I'm going to, I was about to say, I'm going to argue with <laughs> for a second. You, you, you were about to say, I thought you were leading into Jay promotes trooper clothing more than anybody. And I was going to be like, no stone is the face. Of yes. trooper clothing. No. <laughs> Kevin, yeah. Kevin is definitely we, in way more of those pictures than anybody else. <laughs> we love Jay. We love, we love stone. Um, Good people. you know, probably one of the stone is probably one of the youngest, uh, to join the Milsons crowd, um, and sport, uh, trooper clothing. He's always Which, dressed up looking like a badass. So, uh. <laughs> so real quick, just before we go into like the meat and potatoes here, Trooper Clothing, you guys make just basically smaller versions of bigger stuff. That's kind of the general idea? Exactly, okay. yeah. Uh, we've kind of built our brand by uh, Honor and Heroes. Uh, our main uh, side of our business is uh, the uh, making kids fatigue so that they can honor uh, their uh, parents and dress up as heroes uh, and then we also have uh, the tactical line that we've added uh, that uh, we, uh, you know, brought on board uh, about four years ago. And uh, we've just continued to add every year uh, as uh, the demand warrants it. So when we're talking like smaller than normal, are we talking like child size or doll size or like fur well, baby size? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, our, we actually have a baby line, and uh, that uh, goes from uh, zero to three month all the way up to a nine to twelve month. Uh, and then okay. we have our tactical line is uh, and the youth uh, uniforms. Uh, they go anywhere from a two T uh, all the way up to an eighteen twenty in the uh, youth airsoft uniforms. Oh, that's cool. So I'm actually seeing a rad picture that just went up. Like, is that? Can you custom order like the racks on there, or is that just like a standard rack on those little class A's? Because that would be insane if you could match dad exactly, or is yeah, that just like a standard? Thing? We don't do any of the insignia. Oh, okay, uh, that would be cool. So probably that was probably dad. That, that was probably dad that threw that on. Bought some mini medals and Ooh. threw them on there. Because you could yeah. use those like little dress medals, right? Like for kid size, that you know, like the 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 tuxedo uniforms. Like, didn't they have little tiny yeah. medals that go with that yeah, or something? Yeah, there were minis. I never was that cool. I never owned a set of mess dress because I was not. Of mess dress yes, type I of people. Working, <laughs> they, they were to no one was dress. inviting me to dining out, let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, speaking of dining. Dining. Yeah, that's a good segue right there. I we know, actually right? are like, we're both, I don't know if you know this, Rich, we're both barbecue fans, like yes. in a big way. And hey. we do, a, we actually schedule some of our events based around getting good barbecue as we travel. So we actually, if we hear that an airsoft event has a barbecue food truck, we will say that yep. in the event segment. Because we need to know information like that. We're those kind of people. In fact, actually, if you're looking for a crossover of all your loves, uh, there is a major barbecue festival in Wackahatchee the same weekend as Conquest of Avalon every year. So you could actually cross-pollinate if you wanted to. I'm just saying. Yeah, Overwatch <laughs> Tactics brought in a, a great barbecue food truck. That, that was It good. was so huge. The plates were... Oh it was value, Speaking too. my language. So, uh, so how, why are you so passionate about barbecue? Uh, it's just a uh, it's a craft that I've kind of picked up, uh, I guess, about the last 10 years uh, that uh, I really enjoy doing, you know, and I, I, I like competing uh, at a at a higher level. Uh, we go to competitions and uh, bring a team together and compete against a lot of other teams from other states. And uh, well, when you say I just team, enjoy doing it, when you say team, how many people are we talking about here? Like we're talking like a football uh, there's, team, there's a baseball team, about four. Oh, OK, uh, four of us uh, cooks and uh you uh, you typically enter the contest uh, um, with your recipes of uh, three different meats. You'll have a uh, ribs and mm. brisket and mm. chicken, mm. and uh, you know Sorry. you just uh, let your uh, recipe shine. You know, let the let the smoke and rub. Uh, so now bar barbecuing is different from grilling. Well, Indeed. yeah, of course. And actually, if you're in the Low Country of the Carolinas, it's not even called barbecue if it's not pork. Well, a lot no, of people no, no. don't know that. It, it's more about the method. Yes. So barbecuing is is cooked how, Rich? Uh, barbecue is typically about uh, 300 degrees and up. 
Uh, smoking is low and slow, which is uh, typically 225 degrees. Uh, and you just let the smoke roll and uh, you uh, let your rub and uh, recipes all uh, just uh, meld into uh, just too much goodness. So that so all right, that does it about for tonight's show. We're going. Um, we're gonna go get some barbecue food truck right we're now. We're going to Red White and Blue Barbecue. It's right down the street. You guys can hang out with Rich. We'll call it a night. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds. I mean, here's the question: Is how do you not eat all your product? Because when I I used to cook a little bit back in the day for for monies, and um, I was always about twenty pounds heavier whenever I was working in the kitchen because you know, it's there and it's good. Like, how do you avoid that, dude? How does it make it to the judges? I don't. I'm, a, I'm a pretty big guy myself. Okay, so. <laughs> I enjoy throwing down, uh, you know, after we're done uh, with our turn-in boxes. So uh, once we turn in our product, uh, it's and, uh, uh, we get to kind of throw down. It's cocktail and uh, barbecue sauce time kind of thing? You're right. <laughs> that You're sounds right. like not a bad way to spend your day. Cook all morning and cocktails and barbecue all afternoon Jay, with your buddies. Jay, Jay yeah. Irwin says, He's got the meats. He does. Yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. So let's cool. get into uh, Trooper Clothing. How how did it first start? Are we going all the way back? We're, we're yeah, all the way back. All the way, way back the in the way, way back, back machine. machine. Yep. Ooh, Mr. Peabody oh. here. <laughs> Originally, uh, uh, Trooper Clothing uh, had originated in the uh, mid-1960s, and uh, they were creating uh, uh, fatigues, adult fatigues, and... Uh, uh, hunting vests uh, for adults, and then he uh, eventually um, transitioned into adding a couple of uh, kids' uniforms, and uh, that that was uh, successful for them for uh, quite a few years. Um, Who's they only he? Offered uh, it was uh, it was uh, the previous owner. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, then Dad uh, bought the company in '99, and. Um, we're a family-owned business here in San Antonio, Texas. And, High five. Uh, Always good to my, hear. Uh, my um, her sister came on board shortly after he acquired the company, and uh, she created our uh, baby line and uh, for, that, for the Army originally. And then uh, the Air Force showed interest in the Navy and then the Marine Corps. And uh, lastly, the, the Coast Guard got on board. And uh, Hold on a we second. got licensed with all the, all the branches of the military and uh, were carried in. The PX is around the. Country. That's that's you guys. That's I us. didn't I didn't realize that. Like I've been seeing. So you guys make all the uniforms for like the bears and the kids and all that other stuff that you can like uh, that everybody can buy and stuff like. I didn't realize that, man. Yeah, that. Oh, we I've don't been make seeing the those for years. For the bears, but, okay. Uh, we make them just for the kids. You know, that's another company that does the bears, but uh, we do all the uniforms that are at Aphis, Nextcom, MCX. Uh, that closes and, uh, a that closes secret. a very big loop for me right there. I'm, I'm like I was always wondered where those came from, and you only yeah, ever used to see them on post. That was the thing, oh, and wow. like it's like where did it come from? And like I was like you know because you, it's it's always kind of a pain in the ass to go on post and buy stuff if you're when you're not at work. And so like if you know you're like where can I find this other than here? And I was like I always thought it was like an AFES only product or something like that. You know that's kind of really cool that it it's totally you been you guys the whole time. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we go ahead. So when when your uh, when your dad bought the company was uh, w were they producing in house or were you outsourcing to a factory uh, in the beginning? Originally, uh, Trooper was manufacturing in uh, Fort Gordon, Georgia, and uh, then a lot of the manufacturing started dropping off uh, in the uh, <clears throat> late '80s, early '90s, uh, and a lot of the manufacturing was moving overseas uh, to China and uh, down to Mexico and South America. So. Um, the uh, company went uh, bankrupt when uh, my father acquired uh, the business in 99, and he had the idea of uh, taking the, the manufacturing and open a uh, facility down in Mexico uh, where he produced uniforms down there for uh, close to about five years, and then he found a uh, source in China, uh, ended up moving uh, over to China, and then lastly, uh, we're moving uh, our factory from China to uh, Laos. And so what, why why the change from from China to Laos? Because I mean, a lot of what, what a lot of goods are, are made in in China, but I mean, I mean the tariffs. I mean, sorry, or yep. did, did Trump Great point. lift sorry. those tariffs? I, I'm dying here, guys. If you guys remember 
from King of the Hill when his neighbor first introduced himself. I don't watch that show. You've never seen King of the Hill? No. It's like, what country are you from? Laos. No, what country are you from? Laos. You don't... Okay. No. It was just me. Sorry. I'm just giggling. thinking. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Rich. You know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about with that scene. It was... My really, God, Bobby. Right, right, right. So, country, mean, ha- Laos. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Have the tariffs been lifted on China or no? Uh, the China tariffs are still going on, I think, because it was supposed to be a right. integrated thing where like, but we were supposed, I don't want to get political, but I'm I just mean, saying there was supposed to be a deal. I don't think it ever got really signed. I mean, when you're so talking 25, 30% tariffs, just to give our uh, followers an idea, if something costs a, an extra buck on a tariff, that's going to raise the, the retail price another $3. Yep. Just to, just to make up that that cost mm-hmm. of everything. So, um, but you're, go ahead. That's why we've uh, tried to be proactive. Uh, we just can't continue with those kinds of uh, tariffs. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we can absorb some, but uh, not that kind of margin. So, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've looked at alternative uh, sources and, you know, when you're licensed with the military, you have to, to uh, manufacture in compliant countries. Yep. And, uh, you know, luckily Laos uh, worked for uh, all the branches of the military. So we're going to be moving there. We're currently in the transition now and uh, fixing to start our first run of production here in the next 30 days. On the upside, though, it'll give you plenty of excuses to go visit the factory because Laos is supposed to be one of the most gorgeous countries in the world. So side side effect, you get to go eat really rad food and hang out in a beautiful <laughs> jungle. You know what I mean? When you're visiting yeah, the factory. Yeah, as Corona doesn't spill over there. We're, we're just, just don't drink beer and you're fine. That's how it works. If you stay away from Mexican beer, you won't get Corona. <laughs> so uh, Jay is uh, brings up a, a good segue. So, I mean, you mentioned you, you're in AFES, MCX all that but do you do uh, other contracts with like um the sea cadets or the young marines or the civil air patrol things like that what are the there's young great marines? question um we're actually uh in the middle of uh transitioning the uh sea cadets into um the uh, new type three uniforms uh so we uh received a contract from them last year and uh procured it and uh we got all the product in and it's uh, currently in the distribution stages. Uh, they'll be wearing uh, the new Type 3 uniform about uh, mid-year this year. Is the uh, Type also, 3 the purple one or whatever, the blue and purple one? Is that what you're talking about? Sorry, I'm not no, that up on Navy it's, uniforms. It's actually, they call it the avocados. It's the, the uh, kind of a brighter green and black. Oh, uh, so uniform. the Navy's switching again? I, I, yeah. So they're going away they, from the blue thing? They actually switched about a year ago. Oh, did uh, they? But the okay. uh, didn't have clearance until uh, now. Oh, so, uh, so you guys are making yeah, that happen. Yeah, with the Secret Desk, uh, we got them outfitted. We're also in talks with uh, the uh, young Marines and possibly uh, manufacturing some uh, Class A's uh, for them, and uh, as well as the uh, uh, Civil Air Patrol. Uh, there's a possibility we may do some ABU uniforms for them down the road. Oh, wow. So there is a lot of markets there that apparently no one... So where were they getting uniforms before? Were they just buying them secondhand off the shelf, or how did that work? They were. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now you're actually understanding is uh, they were buying all of the surplus uh, uniforms that they they could acquire. Oh wow! So you guys totally had a niche that no one. It's like an itch no one ever scratched or even knew they needed to scratch. That's really cool. I like that a lot. So now, yeah, you know, it, I, I'm a surplus guy myself, but you know, if the option is there where I can just you know click three boxes on a website. That's a lot easier than digging through bins mm-hmm. for four days. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and not true. everybody wants to do that or say like, oh, look at this helmet I found from 1982 in Czechoslovakia. It's really cool. It's neat. Look at this old mess kit I found from the 50s. And then you look around in the store and there's like literally nobody listening to you. Yeah, you know, and you're, you're all excited <laughs> about it. No no one else wants to do that. So um, <laughs> when did you start actually – Because so your, your dad bought the business um, in 99. When did you start actually working for the company? Oh, I came on board in, uh, it was uh, about 2009. Uh, my dad, w- after he had uh, uh, purchased the company, he eventually wanted to uh, kind of, you know, step back and, uh, and retire. And uh, I was working uh, for a previous employer, and I was uh, typically overseas 250 to 300 days a year. That's hard. Um, so, yeah, it was tough on the married life. So, uh, luckily, my wife was patient with it. Um, and uh, we, uh, we were able to, uh, dad extended the offer uh, for me to kind of, uh, him to groom me uh, and kind of take the company over. And uh, 
I did that, and uh, so did you, know, you just like jump right into? Uh, yeah, he was management. R- Rich, the executive vice president of everything. That's how it works when your dad owns company. Yeah. Right? Well, uh, what, what was I'm, that? What I'm, was that movie with a uh, Tommy Boy? Tommy Boy. Yeah, you were Tommy Boy, right? Yeah. You were you were screwing up at college for seven or eight years, and then you took over the company, right? <laughs> no, that was uh, that was the last thing I really wanted was uh, you know a position just based on a you know who I was. So, so where'd uh, you start out? It was important for me uh, to uh, start from the ground up. I uh, started in the warehouse and uh, I learned all the different patterns of each of the branches of uh, nice. chemical and, You know, I slung boxes and packed orders and then I kind of worked my way up into the, the office uh, dealing with uh, customers and uh, going to trade shows. Uh, you know, also dealing with uh, seeing the challenges with, uh, you know, the employees and uh, the- How big the, are you guys? Challenge. Speaking of employees, we have uh, we have uh, ten employees. Oh wow! So you have a pretty sizable workforce in here in the states as well to actually like get all this stuff to people. That's pretty cool. Dude. How yeah. long did it take you? Um, you know, doing all these different jobs before your your dad actually retired and, and you took the reins. Uh, it was about uh, five years. Uh, he still comes in and kind of winds us up from time to time. Tells but, you what you're doing wrong. Yeah, in, in detail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, you know, luckily he's uh, he's he enjoys to uh, travel. Uh, so he comes in, you know, when he's in between cruises or uh, you know having fun, and uh, he comes in and winds us up and then leaves. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, we're pretty well uh, running things day to day operations, uh, you know, by ourselves. But uh, you know, he gave me a lot of guidance and uh, over the years, I'm grateful for that. Well, I'm a little jelly because, I mean, it's not everybody that gets to have that kind of relationship with their dad in terms of like, you know, everybody gets the mentorship when we're kids, you know, or teenagers or young adults, but not everybody can get the full life mentorship of like, you know, here's, you know, you can work side by side. I mean, I don't know how I'd ever achieve that with my son because he's way smarter than me. I don't know what the hell I'm going to teach him in a couple of years, but <laughs> like mostly it's the, you know, that's just that being able to get that quality time where you're doing something productive, you know, that's, that's awesome to hear, man. That's really neat. So yeah. high five to that yeah. dude. So yeah, what, what is the Forsyth group? Cause I mean, I, I mean, you, you say you only have, you know, a workforce of 10 staff there in San Antonio. Is it Forsyth or Forsyth? We never established that. It's, oh, it's, he better not say Forsyth. If it's Forsyth, I mean, that's way cooler, I think, honestly. I mean, Forsyth <laughs> is fine, but... Forsyth. If he's secretly a, a Jedi killer, I mean, we this is a much more interesting interview. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the Forsyth group? No, the, uh, the Forsyth group is our, our company itself. Uh, we have an, a, a little umbrella of brands that uh, we actually have, uh, the first being our Tiny Trooper brand, and that's, uh, that's all of our baby uh, items anywhere from zero to three month up to you know the, the toddler type items. Uh, and then our second brand is the Junior Trooper brand, which is really kind of the core of our, our business. Uh, it's the uniforms uh, with all the branches of the military. And then uh, finally, the the Trooper Tactical line uh, that we have, that brand, uh, all of those brands kind of fall under the the Forsyth group. So that's uh, that's why we go by that. Ah, okay. Just I had a funny thought seeing some of these pictures that are scrolling through here. But if you guys have like infant camouflage stuff like camis, I'd be a little worried about that. I had enough trouble tracking my kid when I could see him in bright colors. But if you put him <laughs> in camis and release him in the park, I think I'd lose my toddler. I mean, yeah. you know, like that, that, that it's a big possibility. It might be a warning label on that, you know, or something oh, you necessary. Just, you just put like a little <laughs> doggy strobe light on there. Or you put that one of those flags that like, you know, that low slung bicycles have like, so it's six oh, like, up. Yeah. Like Samurais. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe something that should come a little warning there. Like, you know, do not release in woods unsupervised or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what kind of things are important when you're trying to take a full size uniform and basically just making a smaller version of it. Really our primary uh, uh, goal is to make a, you know, as close a replica as possible of the issue uniform. Uh, first and foremost, our quality needs to be, uh, you know, at a high standard. We, we certainly don't like being, uh, having our products being called a uh, knockoff a cost. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, we like to be, you know, re- re- reference our uh, products as uh, being uniforms because that's what they are. Uh, they're just scaled down. But uh, 
you know, we also got to keep in, in mind uh, the price points. Uh, you know, kids grow so fast, so they outgrow these things. And if they're, you know, uh, too expensive, then, you know, people aren't going to buy them. Uh, so we try to take a lot of the components off that are non-functional for kids. Uh, and then we found that uh, kids love Velcro and they love pockets. They love carrying rocks. and <laughs> Yes, else. they do. <laughs> they, uh, they're also able to, you know, the Velcro allows them to kind of customize their, their own uniform and wear their mom or dad squadron or unit patch and you you actually, know, whatever type of flag. Your, your complete target audience is my son because I'm not a patch guy and everybody knows this, but I always bring patches home for my son and his new, he has a, like a patch wall backpack that he wears to school now, which is really cool. And he's actually just outgrown his like real tree smock that I got him a couple years ago, which is a great, you know, option always. But we're right getting ready to go into some of your stuff because he's old enough and relatively stable yeah. enough that I can I'm actually put him in something, you know. But I'm he actually, loves all that stuff, man. It's I'm great. actually curious uh, who all's in the chat. Uh, give some hearts or make a comment in the chat if if your child owns Trooper Clothing uh, apparel. You know, yeah, send, let shout us know. out. In, in let us chat. know if you approve or you disapprove. I don't think there's going to be any disapproves, but we always <laughs> have to lay it out there because we're fair. So, we're you know fair to people. I so, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know. <laughs> so the company was focused with the, the the tiny trooper and the the junior trooper or the trooper clothing what uh, made you make the jump to trooper tactical so this is like big boy clothes yes. is that what I mean by, by tactical yeah okay. the, yeah the uh, larger kids line um that uh that was really uh, again props to uh jay Irwin. uh he was he was uh buying some uniforms for cav and uh he had reached out to to uh our website um and sent me a sent me an email and said look man there's a demand for you know this this uh, functional, good quality kid stuff uh, for airsoft, and because uh, really you only can roll pants up on adult pants, you only can roll the legs on adult pants up so far. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the plate carriers, you yeah. know, they they flop all over the place when they're all geared up. So, you know, uh, I, and I started talking to uh, to uh, Jay, and he gave us a lot of direction, and uh, it all made sense. Uh, so he invited me out to. Uh, one of the ops with uh, American Milsim, and uh, that's where uh, he told me, look, man, uh, talk to a lot of these kids, you know, and you'll see the need. And sure enough, you know, it was it was uh, very apparent that uh, they needed stuff out there, you know, that actually fits and functions, you know. What so was, that was. What were some of the the suggestions that 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 Jay made that you, you guys really didn't think of before, um, you know, that helped build this line? We really didn't even target a, a tactical customer or airsoft customer. So, you know, I was unaware there was that much of a demand for uh, that product. Uh, so um, he he really kind of brought to light, you know, the needs and, and all of that. And we started uh, creating some prototypes. And uh, luckily, Cav was able to give us uh, a lot of insight. And he tested it on ground level. And, you know, we made a lot of changes to different prototypes. And eventually uh, ended up with a, a good product that uh, we were happy with. Can you leave that last gra- Can you bring that back last graphic back up real quick? Because it's, it's, it's still on. Is it still on? Okay. Um, quick question about this: When you guys are designing the more functional stuff for smaller bodies, proportionally, humans are different when they're children than they're adults. So, what were the major design considerations you guys got into? Was it you had to like shorten the arms compared to how the normal uniforms are? Like, did you size differently? What was kind of your main concerns when you started doing those conversions to not to say that your previous stuff wasn't functional, but it wasn't like field ready. You know what I mean? Like what you're doing when, you know, the newer lines are more for running around the woods. So what are the big holdups when you're designing body shape stuff or anything like that? A lot of the challenges with the kids stuff is that they grow so much Mm -hmm. and so fast, you know, so we, uh, we try to go a little bit long on all our cuts for the sleeves and the, the, uh, end seams that allows uh, a little bit of growth, but those are really the two main things that, uh, are the biggest challenge is finding consistency because kids are, 
you know, so many different sizes, you know, you just got to try to find a happy medium and, so and kind run of, with it. So kind of the approach you guys took is that like you buy it long at the start of the season and by the time they hit the end of this season and the winter comes, like they're just starting to get a little high water. Like hopefully there's like a time there where it fits perfectly is kind of the goal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, let me, let me grab a, oh, yeah, grab, uh, grab a, the pants. You got and, props. Uh, cool. I love uh, props. I'll actually kind of show you what we, uh, what we designed with the tactical pants is oh, very they're cool. a, a little more expensive pant. Yep. Um, they actually have a hem, a uh, two-inch extension that Velcros out. Oh, that's uh, very cool. So as the child grows, you know, they can extend that cuff out. And, and then they uh, don't destroy the... Them. And they don't destroy the pant or the arm leg by dragging it all over. It's secure and it's good to go. That's, I, I that's, actually have a suggestion nice. for that. What you got? Because Spaz complained about it every single time. Did he? The the well, there's Velcro under there, right? That's yeah. holding it. So then there's a soft loop and a hard hook. The hard hook would dig into his shins and his ankles when it was extended. When it was extended. Oh, so if there okay. was, so I had to basically just cut some generic, you know, Velcro, Velcro out just yeah. to cover it. Yeah. Well, that's good feedback. Thanks for letting me know. But he generally enjoyed the experience of wearing them, though, right? Like uh, that was just like a small. Oh yeah, no, well, like it was so bad he did not want. To wear them because huh? he doesn't wear like thick mountain boot socks. He likes to wear his little his little uh, cartoon. Oh, so you're you're running into some problems where like he still he <laughs> hasn't quite wants to learn lessons the hard way. No, kind of thing. <laughs> I, no, actually, no. He his personality is he he projects through his socks. Oh, like, I didn't realize that. Like pug socks, spam you know, socks. Okay, I mean, this explains a lot because every, if you guys don't know, everywhere we go, this guy like is obsessed with socks. Yes. Like if we were in California. For souvenirs. He went to Kohl's. Like who goes to a random Kohl's in California for like no reason? We stopped in the sock place. Uh, Vegas though had a really good sock place. Yes. Vegas, by the way, next time you're in Vegas, they have this place called Just Underneath or something. No, like it was, it was uh, Socks and Bottoms. Socks and Bottoms. Yeah, I'm totally wrong on that. But they had, it was just a whole store of funny boxers and socks. So check them out. But yeah, that explains a lot of like why we are always in sock stores for some reason. I can't ever explain why. Um, Things you learn on the road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Brendan Wilbank. Brent, Brendan Wilbank. Sorry, Brendan. Brendan says he would love to see you guys at the bigger events targeting targeting the upcoming community. Ooh, and good point. he actually makes a good point because there we're 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 starting to get into that next generation. We it started to happen probably about two years ago. When the next generation is now starting to come up and and go to these larger events, um, airsoft's been around long enough. So you're saying that actually kids can grow up hearing about stuff, and that that stuff will still exist by the time they become teens or adults, yeah. so they can go to it. I mean, it, have you ever thought about setting up an event, or you just kind of use your ambassadors uh, as your main uh, voice out in the community? Yeah, we discussed it actually. Uh, um, I I had planned to. Uh, to uh, set up with uh, at one of Soto's events, and uh, we uh, it ended up falling through. Uh, with, we had a, another engagement, so we couldn't make it. Uh, but um, yeah, that's a possibility um, that uh, we could set up a booth, and you know those types of places uh, at those events. You know, it's just an endless amount of feedback. You yep. know, on what kind of product improvements you can have, and what what's out there or what's not out there, you know, that we could uh, possibly make and bring in in the future. And speaking of from a guy who spends a lot of time in those booths, people will tell you whether you want to know or not all the feedback you're ever going to need. A lot yeah, of it. Yeah, whether you like all it or not, you're right. day long. It's, it seems to be sometimes like anybody who has had some small problem with a product 15 years ago will find you and complain to you about it. And you're like, I'm sorry, but I can't change that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. So we have a, uh, oh, and if you go to these big events, make sure you bring a good amount of tactical, trooper tactical stock to uh, sell, yes. sell there. Because people site. will take it right off your hands. They so we do have a, a good question from Jerry Ross. Um, he is, AKA Beast from the Gorilla Airsoft Radio podcast. Jerry, why haven't you been on the podcast recently? What's up with that? No, but Jerry also owns Gorilla Airsoft yep. store in Bakersfield, California. And he has a very good question. Does Trooper Clothing work with any wholesale distributors or can they buy wholesale to sell retail in their shops? Good question. Um, yes, uh, if you go to our website, uh, trooperclothing.com, uh, up at the top on the nav bar, about in the middle of the page, there's a uh, wholesaler sign-up link. Uh, you can click on that and uh, sign up as a wholesaler. We'll reach out to you and uh, 
give you all the marketing items, price sheets, catalogs, things like that uh, that you need to uh, to get started as a wholesaler. Uh, and on that vein, uh, the stuff you guys do for AFES, is that an exclusive or is that, is that line anybody can order from that line as well? Anybody can order for that line, but we do offer exclusive pricing uh, okay. to all the military families. So it's actually uh, quite a bit uh, cheaper I, uh, at AFIS than it is on our website. Because I can see, like, you know, you know, as the word gets farther out there, because you guys are still kind of a little, it's relatively like a, an industry thing to know, or you're in the sport and you know about it. But as the word gets out there, I see people want to buy this stuff, but you don't have an AFIS or a PX near you, you or you can't buy from it. You know So who you need to find, you know. Another is place. in yeah. San Antonio. Who? That doesn't even have to pay for shipping. He comes to the warehouse. Are you talking Psycho? Psycho! Psycho! Airsoft Revolution 15. AR-15. He carries your stuff, doesn't he? Yes, he does, he, I heard. He, he does, man. We appreciate the support. This is this has turned into like a marketing like seminar at this point. Like, <laughs> if you call within the next time ten minutes, ten percent off your first order with Trooper Clothing here on the debrief. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. <laughs> oh my gosh. So because we've been talking about the whole virus <laughs> thing and everything. <laughs> Europe is still alive. And to prove it, Francisco Lobo from Portugal is in the house watching the Of channel. the Wolf. How's it going, brother? Black How are you wolf. doing? Hey. Of the Black Wolf. Yes, he's he's known as Black Wolf. Well, Lobo means wolf. And right, but his, his nickname is Black Wolf. Oh, well, what's up, Black Wolf? It was, it was good to have you here. I thought I was going to be a little... Uh, um, knowledgeable on that one, but apparently you beat me to it. Okay. <laughs> um... Where so, are we at on this thing? So your son is in the the ninth grade right now. Braxton has he has he shown Wait any minute. interest hold in uh, airsoft or, hold on a or second. paintball? Wait before he answers this. Rich, Jenny, and Braxton. This is like a sitcom in the Midwest. How did you guys find like the most all American set of names? You must have been thinking about that when <laughs> I you mean, were in Braxton, Texas, Houston, yeah. barbecue, Texans, barbecue makes uniforms <laughs> for the military. That makes, uh, do you just bleed red, white, and blue, kids. or is that how that works? Like, is it does it alternate when you get cut and when you're shaving or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, Braxton, he is uh, he unfortunately doesn't play airsoft, but uh, he's passionate about sports. Uh, we can change that if you want. Sports, uh, yeah, I need to get him on board. We, we got some uh, friends that'll plays, hook him up, don't worry. He plays football and uh. You know, uh, runs track and uh, also golfs and all of that. So, uh, you know, that's where his time is spent is uh, with sports. But uh, Good I do hear. need to get him out there. I think we can arrange something. Um, we're going to be down your way in November if you guys want to make your way to Avalon Way and I got some extra equipment. Set them all up. Have a good have a good weekend. Just let us know, man. Right on. Yeah. Make the good. make the offer. Anytime we're in the area, you're welcome to come hang out with us. Appreciate it. Because I cool. always want to grow the sport, brother. That's 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 like our mantra around here, or it should be actually everybody's mantra. So, actually, speaking of uh, mantras, of mantras um, you being a small business, you know, what values do you want your employees and your customers to learn or take away from uh, Trooper Clothing? Ooh, oh, good question. Uh, Dad always preached to me that uh, really the harder you work, the luckier you get, and uh, you know, it's uh, I'm a firm believer of that. I think you know the more you're on the grind. Uh, harder you hustle, I think more doors open and more opportunities open up uh, for you. So uh, I like to, uh, you know, instill that into, uh, you know, our staff and team here. Um, and also, you know, at the core of our business is uh, to honor those uh, those military heroes uh, that, uh, you know, sacrifice so much for our country. So, uh, you know, that's important as well uh, for us to support those who support us. You're welcome for my service, sir. You are Appreciate welcome. You. <laughs> and, Sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> William Soto says, "Rich, he doesn't play yet." Explanation part. So, oh, I uh, think Soto's I, getting in the car, yeah, yeah, I, driving I think out. Got to get him on board, Soto. <laughs> just so you know, Rich, we have people everywhere. We can we can just make a call to to Psycho, and he might be at your house tomorrow. You know, tomorrow Saturday morning, saying, "Hey, guess what? You're coming to the field for the day." So just yeah. be prepared. Our agents That's are good. everywhere, if, and, if required. You know. <laughs> We, we usually have a pretty good following of regulars that come back and forth, but I would just like to give a shout out to a first time listener. Uh, Wheeler Henriksen is watching the show live. Where? Um, I'm not sure, but he says, you guys are awesome. Keep up the good work and quality airsoft material. High five. Also, thanks, by, Wheeler. While we're on a break real quick, I want to recognize Brandon Wilbanks. Because he just got Taser certified. <gasps> and if you're friends with him on Facebook, you can go see the whole thing. It just went up this week. So, so Brandon, do you recognize this sound? 
Or are we bringing back bad Always memories? take the darts. I, you know, I always, <laughs> I was a taser instructor for the sheriff's <laughs> department in Northern California. And what I always love to ask them is like, do you want to get shot with the darts or do you want to use the alligator clips? And what they don't realize when when you shoot the darts, there's no barb, so they just go straight in. They go inside. You don't hurts. feel them because you immediately feel the shock. But they only, you only get a spread about this far, so the arc only goes between that. If they actually asked for the alligator clips, I would clip one to the top of their shirt, and bastard. I would clip the other one down <laughs> on their sock, and they would just go like they would fold backwards, like oh my god! It, it was it was my pride and joy because. To get taser, taser certified, you have to be shot I, a few times. I am taser certified. I know. I went through it. It was awful. <laughs> it was, but I'll tell you what I discovered I when like we went try. through. <laughs> it, you know, here's what it. People will describe it different ways, and I have never personally had a bullet enter my body. But a guy who was on the team with me, uh, my team at the time, he was an E6 who had actually been shot before, and his words were. I would rather take another AK round in the invasion and deal with that for a couple of days than get tasered again. Oh, so know, it is right? not pleasant. It oh. is incredibly unpleasant. It locks up your whole body. It is awful. Uh, Wheeler's from Utah. Is he? Yep. Oh. Um, so does I says, to Utah Airsoft, by the way, and you yeah. crazy at 500 FPS rules. That hurts. I know, right? <laughs> Soto says, uh, you know, Rich, when Trooper comes to Avalon in November, you and your son will have tickets on him and... I'm going to voluntold Soto too because he has gear for training purposes. Yep. He's also going to outfit you with all the guns and everything you're going to need. So you guys are going yeah. to be guests of Avalon if you guys make it there. That means you have Not to come. All. You get that, right? I like you can't say that, no. Soto. <laughs> yeah, you can't say no to that. Yeah, peer pressure, man. And honestly, I'll tell you Shit what. That. Of all the events I have been to in the last couple of years, I had the most fun at Avalon. It's not actually Milsim. It's not actually Airsoft in a traditional sense. And I say this all the time. It is a scavenger hunt with automatic weapons. That's what it is. It's a team scavenger hunt. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's tag. just tag team team tag and scavenger hunt. Yes. It is so much fun. It is. Uh, it's a great way to get introduced to the events because um, it it's not that serious, but not like in a everybody blows it off way. It's right. in a not mm-hmm. serious because we're in a medieval. But no, town it's shooting hard. Guns at us. Yes, it is not fun. I mean, when, you, trying to when find we stuff. say scavenger hunt, you think like, oh, that's like, no, no. these are like lances. I think it's actually jars of material hidden to everywhere. juggle and organize than a regular Milsim event because regular Milsim is just What's like airsoft. Um, You're not taking territory for any extended period of time. Like most Milsims are land grabs, essentially the way you want to think about it. This way, it's about. The, t- the the parts of the playing field that you're controlling at Avalon or events like it, it's very fluid. you control for like two minutes so you can get a team in there to search for something you're looking and for. And it's in a Ren Fair yeah. with like 200 buildings. So it looks like a Renaissance Fair. But all the props that they do, I mean, they do like 50 props. There's catapults, side, shields, But it all maps. blends in. Yeah, because it fits the theme. It fits the theme. And you like you wow. don't understand how many times you would just walk by Hold something. on, just for Jay, the holy hand grenade since he Why is. Why did you have to bring that up, bro? I had to. I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I got I to gotta fluff him a little bit and take you down a little bit. Sorry. It's just how it works. <laughs> oh, and the Clotless Wonder also mentions because... Avalon is so great because of golf cart jousting. That is, by the way, if you want to see an awesome video, go to ASAP's website and you will see yours truly jousting with the ASAP guys with zing bows on golf carts. It was super dangerous and super fun. We were iPro. It was okay. They, they, were the, they were normal sunglasses. They weren't Z87, but we had iPro on. So, <laughs> Speaking of which, Cole joined us, so I have to plug ASAP tonight. They have uh, the hop-up app on tonight right after us. Oh yeah, they yep. have the folks from Hop Up. They showed up, so I can plug them. Oh, we got <laughs> we got Shelly Faust from Stampede up, Airsoft Stampede? down in Port Ritchie, Florida. Mm-hmm. So uh, her and her husband Troy uh, run Stampede Airsoft. Do they have a house team? Yes, they do have a house. Team. Is it called the Herd? Please tell me it's called the Herd. I don't know. It should be called the Herd if they yes, have a house team. It, it should be. <laughs> it should and, be. <laughs> um, you know, she has a lot of young players down there, and. Uh, Maybe we can get Stampede Airsoft to uh, carry some trooper clothes. Do they need like a trooper section in like the like a you know so that they can equip people properly? Because that Shelley, might be necessary. Trooper clothing is way better than Virtus. Mm-hmm. You would sell much more trooper clothing <laughs> than you would Virtus. I'm just telling you. Whoa, 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 whoa! Did we, did we cross line there? 
or are we still okay? She knows. She knows. Okay, we're, we're here. We're, we're, we're you're here. there. You got it. We're yeah, good. We're good. good. Okay, that's we're a good. mind meld through the camera right it there. It's good. You it guys is, don't know uh, what's yeah, going we'd on. Love to have oh, them on board. She says her, their know. house team is holy cows. Okay, I like that even better. That's that. That's rad. That's rad. High five, Shelly. She says she's got room. She's got room. <laughs> she's so, got room. She needs a rack. <laughs> so, um, since you make smaller size versions of military uniforms, um, think back. How many official camo patterns? Have you gone through your company as a result of whatever general was in charge that changed the uniform <laughs> for all these different Hold branches? On, let me see if I can count the total there should be. One, so, two. Sorry, keep going. I'm just going to no, count. You, yeah, yeah, you just so, keep... far, uh, so far, I've seen three uh, since I've been here. And uh, the first being the uh, Navy uh, transitioning from the blueberries uh, into the type threes. And then, uh, of course, uh, the uh, ACUs with the Army. And then, uh, lastly, the the uh, Air Force with the ABUs uh, oh, transition the into OCP. That's the one I missed. So I counted seven. I forgot the ABUs because I counted BDU, DCU, which are the the two ones that everybody was back in the nineties. And mm-hmm. then uh, the Marines were the first to come out with the Digis. So you had uh, Mar- Marpat Woodland, Marpat Desert. Then the ACUs came out. Then the Airmen, the Tiger Stripe Air Force one. That was the ABU. ABUs. Right? Yep. And then the Navy stopped using the Marpat and they went to the purple stuff, which I really hope, wish they'd kept forever because it was just glorious to see those guys walking around like that. Like, what are you blending into? Um, you know, Grimace? You having a Barney fight? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> um, and then you had OCPs and that should be where we finish, right? Did I get all those right? So that's eight. You're right. Yeah, I just missed the ABUs. I'm good at useless trivia. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Cliff Clavin? Cliff Clavin? From Cheers. I, I want my, if I'm going to be Cliff around here, I want a large beer while I do the show. <laughs> a large frosty one, not, you know, warm, and like from our fridge here. Oh, <laughs> so out, out of those three changes, what, what was, which one was the most frustrating for you guys to, to catch up to a product line? No doubt it's been the OCP because um, there's only one, uh, one uh, outlet that we can buy it from. Uh, so, you know, you got to kind of, uh, meet all their minimum order quantities uh, that they require uh, to purchase that pattern. And it's typically uh, 10,000 yards at a time uh, that you have to commit to. Uh, so it's it's quite a bit. Um, so it's then, a different factory that makes the material versus that turns it into uniforms? Correct. Oh, I didn't realize no, that. No, yeah, because I, a lot of this material is licensed fabric. Licensed pattern, sorry. So and, like if you only can buy it from the Cry factory. Or whatever, right, right. You know. I mean, there's... A, to kind of educate some folks, like let's just take something me too. simple as a bottle, bottle of BBs. Okay, sometimes uh, when you work with a factory, but you don't like their style of bottle, so you have to source from another factory the bottle that you want in quantity, and then ship it to the factory because they for just them to fill, fill it. it. But then that doesn't also include the labels. The labels may be from somewhere else too. So it. You, there's never a one answer be all answer on a factory when you're making something. Which makes me laugh because everybody in the world of the interwebs and airsoft believes that like their company that they love the best produces everything in some secret factory in the you know, like, you know, at North Pole and they all come from yeah. some place <laughs> and it magically appears and they don't have to source anything, but this stuff comes from different places. Yeah, you I know, know and, it's, it's not easy. And Woody, you know, he hit the nail on the head at you know, which raises the price when when you're looking at this licensed uh, camo patterns, it does raise the price. So oh, when, nine scorpion. So when the army went from the that was cry, for like two months, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, they went from the cry, and now they have the issue. No, no, no. It's what they're wearing now is not cry. They ripped off cry. They took the black parts out and the vertical stripes. The vertical, they called it yeah. something new because they didn't want to pay because oh. cry didn't agree their shitty terms. Sorry, I, I just totally realized that I forgot because that's a different <laughs> pattern than multicam. It's different. Yep. Because what I got issued was multi was from Cry and it was multicam stuff when I deployed the second time. And then when you see the without the pocket flaps, that's the Scorpion ones. Oh, the new gotcha. ones. Yeah. Sorry. So it was from, driving me nuts for a second. <laughs> so getting a change in camo uh, pattern, how long from start to finish from the initial designs and development through the sampling process before you actually get your first ready to sell product. How long does that take? Uh, really, uh, you know, it kind of varies from uh, from you know pattern to pattern, but 
For the most part, I would say probably around nine months. Uh, when you're licensed, you have to deal with all the uh, specs and make sure all the Pantone colors are true, uh, make sure all the prints uh, on the patterns are uh, correct. Um, when you say Pantone what, colors, is, you're saying that like sometimes you might deal with a manufacturer who might go cheap on a dye or something, so everything's not no, perfect or something like that? Is that what you meant? Yeah, Pantones are, every shade is assigned a number. Okay. It's it's like it's X it, number. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like it's digital footprint. Oh, okay. And so you have to make so is it a problem that people just do they just mess up what the the numbers are or do they actually not It's a, do it's the right a universal Pantone okay. a universal thing, but Yeah, it's a universal chart, but uh, a lot of times, you know, if you're not buying licensed fabric, it'll be like uh, one know, number off. Specifications. Okay, yeah, yeah. They they just aren't correct. Cause, so cuz they're you know, we have to we have to submit all of our uh, actual patterns uh, to each of the licensing bodies and have them approve them okay, uh, so that they're, they're consistent with the issue uniform. You won't get this joke, Rich, but it's a, uh, it's a Tokyo Murray MP7 kind of situation. Yes, you know I mean? yes. So do you know the story of the MP7, Rich, by any chance? In Tokyo I Murray? don't. I so so it's, he's talking about the Tokyo Murray is an airsoft manufacturer. Yeah, MP, the high-end one. Yeah, yeah the MP7 was one of their models and they tried to replicate the mp7 off of photos and with when no it was dimensions. released yeah with no dimension when it was released it was actually like three quarter size or something yeah, like that something like it that. was dramatically smaller oh, wow. yeah you know and so it's huh. a running joke in our in the airsoft community of like if you know you try to make something without having any references and yeah. you're just guessing it's a mp7 yeah. situation you know and, what I mean? uh, <laughs> pantones <laughs> will fade and bleed differently based on the fabric as well Well, because everybody's bought that wish.com right. acus and they turned purple after the second washing everybody remembers those right you know woody yeah. actually <laughs> fits in emerson Combat uniforms. What are em is Emerson the ones that are like three sizes too small all the time? Yes, they are. Yeah. What do you can fit in those? Uh, no way. Yep. Is, yeah. is, does Bo have he a does, rival yeah. for the smallest guy in airsoft? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get, getting back to timelines. Oh, uh, sorry, man. We got. The, uh, <laughs> no worries. <man. laughs> sorry, we got off track. Here. Uh, we uh, we then once once we have the pattern and colors approved, uh, then we can go into the uh, actual samples. Uh, we create a sample. Uh, that we like, uh, and then we submit it uh, to the licensing bodies. They approve it, uh, and then we uh, then go into production uh, phase. And uh, it, when we start the production phase, it's typically about 90 days. Uh, you have 30 days to cut and sew, uh, or 30 days to cut, 30 days to uh, sew, and then about 30 days on the water to finally get product to come in. But yeah, the overall. The overall approval process takes anywhere typically from six to nine months. And nine months, I mean, that's from the time that you sign the deal or you decide to do it, not like when it gets approved by the Navy or yeah, whatever once originally. We're committed. So basically, you have to wait to for whatever the branch to actually officially make the changeover. And then if you guys don't know this term, it has to become what's called a bag item is what we called it in the Army. I don't know what they called it everywhere else, but that means it's an issued item that you have to have. So you have to wait for that whole process to happen, and then you guys can start your end and figure out how to turn it into small uniforms so the general public can get a hold of it. That is infuriatingly exactly. slow for you guys, and there's no way to <laughs> speed it up, man. No. So not only are you waiting on the government, and we all know how fast they are getting shit done, yeah. you know, but then you have to do all of your stuff after that and then submit it to another governing body, not the government, but a governing body who says, and you might, something might get screwed up that's out of your control, and now you're starting the process from the beginning, I'm guessing. Am I right? That's right. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. sucks, and man. Look who is late to the party, Psycho Jay Garcia himself from Airsoft <laughs> Jay, Revolution 15. Psycho. Jay, let us know in the chat how easy it is to pick up directly from the factory at Trooper Clothing. Give us a little testimony yeah, on there, please. I'm, I'm surprised you're so late that this is this is one of your distributed brands, and you, you just came to the show so Psycho, late. Psycho, actually, um, his next order is going to be 20% more expensive. I'm sorry. It's just if he came yeah. late. That's how the, the, uh, that's it's, how it's it works. punishment. That's how it works. That's how you're gonna have to pay a premium. <laughs> corona, 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 corona tariff. tariff. <laughs> yes, psycho. You just suffered from the corona tariff. Um, We're making deals, wheeling and dealing here. This is great. <laughs> so I'm I'm sure you you know you, the job that you have uh, keeps you on the road a lot. You were mentioning trade shows. Um, I'm sure you go visit the factory for quality control. And is that really work if you're in the beautiful jungles of Laos? Though I mean, come on. 
that's more of a vacation than work. Let's be let's be honest about that. Okay, I doubt that the factory <laughs> is on some mountainside in a jungle. Oh, I, I believe it's at a resort where like people are rubbing your feet, and he I just would, goes there and yeah, pretends they're looking. Often. They bring product to his hands, you know. <laughs> so, oh wow, Jay is actually saying, uh, "Rich is rad." He came through Airsoft Revolution 15 himself to impress them with how awesome they are. Best ones in the market for what they do. So you guys actually came to his shop and showed off to his customers? That's pretty rad, dude. We did. We did. Yeah, he's a local boy, so. Uh, that must have been easy. Buy. He's got an awesome field. So, um, Speed of which, get your son out to that local field. I'm pretty sure, I know, I'm pretty right? sure Jay would host you guys for the day. Or an Seriously, you yeah. guys have all the hookups. I'm jealous, man. <laughs> so getting back to, you know, you're probably on the road a lot. Um, you know, looking at your Facebook, you... You actually spend a lot of time with your family. I mean, I, I see a ton of pics with Braxton. Um, I see you doing stuff with Jenny. I mean, how how do you balance um, being on traveling so much with your family life? What the? Oh, well, luckily, uh, the, the wife is patient uh, with me. And, uh, you know, in my previous job being on the road, usually 250 to 300 days a year, you know, this is, this is a cakewalk when I'm only gone for a week, you know, on trade shows and you know, being a small business owner, uh, you, uh, that's just part of it. You know, that's one of the things you got to do to go, uh, chase business and try to bring in new, uh, new customer base. So, um, that's just part of, uh, some of the territory that goes with it. But, uh, yeah, it's always important to, uh, make sure that you, ha uh, have time with the family. And, uh, luckily working with troopers allowed me to be able to, uh, be involved in a lot of my son's sports and, and all of that. And the wife holds the, the fort down while while I'm away, and uh, I'm just blessed to to have her. So he Rich is being modest here, guys, but I've stalked him a little bit. I saw that you have done some amazing community events for your local community, and like I mean, and if you guys live near this dude, like you need to get in his circle or however you get invited to this stuff because I'm seeing like. 30 or 40 crock pots full of chili and goodness at one uh, community movie night. You guys oh, are doing dude. a widescreen at another. You guys are barbecuing for like the locals oh. at the community center. Like I'm, um, that's rad, Rich, dude. Can you, adopt, can you adopt my family? So like we're, when, we're up for adoption. It very much seems oh, that we got it. It very much <laughs> seems on. that when you use the term family, yes, you may be referring to your wife and son, but it seems that that term is much more flexible for you where you're from. Is it, would you say that's true? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, part of the Texas hospitality, you know, we like, uh, like doing for others, but, uh, you know, that's really kind of who we are as well. You know, I, I believe that, uh, you know, supporting those military kids uh, and uh, the community as much as we can is important, you know, uh, for not only our brand, but uh, for all, all of our customers. It's really nice to hear about a company that know, wants right? to just give something. You know? So, That's so we're, nice, man. we're coming toward the end of our uh, interview period, oh, which, no. Whoa, no. which is sponsored by Enola Gay. Enola Lifestyle Gay. brand, explosive stuff, smoky yeah. stuff, good for gender good reveals. Stuff. That's a new thing. And is pink coming back soon for gender reveals this year? Do we know? Yes. Pink is coming back. So pink if you're having back. a girl, that's a special edition. There's like, like so many cases made every year. Get on that. Yes. So, uh, where do you see Trooper Clothing five years down the road? Um, we hope to continue to be uh, market dominant in the uh, kids industry, but uh, I also would like to uh, start trying to make an impact in the adult market. Uh, so, I think eventually, you know, we'd like to uh, start transitioning into uh, making some of the adult sized uniforms uh, down the road. Oh, well, you've heard it here first. If you need a test dummy, please feel free to send some <laughs> my way because you can ask my partner here. I am not good to my equipment. I wear it wet, throw it away, leave it sit in a pile moldy for like till I'm ready to use it again, then throw it, maybe throw it in the wash, <laughs> maybe just put it on. So Brent, well, we want to test it. I'm no, ready to destroy your stuff. <laughs> Brandon Wilbanks asks, uh, Rich, what is your favorite part of being a small business owner coming from someone looking into it Ooh, mentoring right here it's good to hear yeah great question uh i just uh i enjoyed you know the the flexibility of uh you know being able to um have um uh, you know a lot of our employees that we we consider family um we uh you know we we learn to become uh you know on a friendly level with them um uh, and, you know, those are those are fun things, you know, getting to travel and try to meet a lot of people, 
you know, in the industry. Uh, we do a lot of trade shows. Uh, we do, you know, the shot show, uh, things like that. So getting to uh, meet a lot of guys like uh, yourselves uh, that uh, have been in the industry a long time, you know, we're just uh, grateful and, and uh, we enjoy, you know, being able to uh, meet a lot of uh, our customers. So um, another couple last things. Uh, is your website up to date with everything you carry? It is, yeah. It's all and, all on board there. And where can people find your website? Uh, www.trooperclothing.com. Uh, you can get on there and uh, hit us up. Send us a DM if you're interested in buying some of our gear, and we'll get you a coupon code. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, I want to appreciate uh, you guys having us on and uh, – Telling y'all oh, for sure. Wait, 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 wait! I heard it. Did you hear that word? I heard it. Coupon code. Where's Woody? Where's Woody? Is he up here? <laughs> Coupon code. Is is he? Oh, okay. No, it didn't happen. No, okay. I know. Oh, well. uh, also, uh, so for our <laughs> listeners uh, on SoundCloud, again, uh, www.trooperclothing one word dot com. Can you, you can, can we find you guys on Facebook too, or Instagram, or anything like that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all our all our social pages. Uh, you can find us on. Uh, Instagram, our Facebook is uh, Trooper Clothing. Instagram is uh, Trooper underscore Clothing. And uh, Twitter is Trooper Clothing, one word. So you guys, wait, you told me you weren't very social media savvy. Are you lying to me? Are you teasing? Oh, are we you, have, we are you kidding me? He's, he's always on the grams. Yeah, he's always on the grams. So. Doing it for the grams, grams? <laughs> we got to step our game up. Oh, well, oh, thank dude. you very much, Rich, for, for this joining us this evening. This has been enjoyable, man. Thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you guys for having us on, man. I didn't even realize, really appreciate I didn't realize we'd gotten to like the, the stopping point. Like this, Normally, I'm the one telling you, uh, <laughs> but you just kind of surprised me with that. Yeah. I thought we had more questions, and I looked. You were moving the you moved the Dropbox without me. I, I know you realized that earlier. Like, yeah, I know. I was trying to click it, and you kept moving it, and I yep. couldn't figure out why it was moving. <laughs> Yeah, he screwed. There's two computers. Never mind. You guys don't worry about it. <laughs> so, Rich, uh, give our love to Jenny and Braxton for us because uh, I know I will. Uh, taking time out of your evening. And Please thank Jenny for sacrificing her evening with you more than anything else. Yeah. We know it's we know who's in charge. No worries at all. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna cut to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. We have a ton of events, uh, airsoft events to share with you. I think we're in triple digits is, now. It is event season and every event that we're going to share with you is still a go i went and searched every one of their discussion pages for those facebook events we will let you know as and announcements come out literally there was one that changed dates like 20 minutes before the show and we actually were able to update uh the slide and all the information. hey if you want us to promote your event how would you do that um you send us a facebook event link that's it just or all you have to do you can call the hotline and leave us a message. And leave us a message. What's the most important part of that? You got to make us a something with a C. Um, a a co -host. Comrades, co-host, characters, co-host. You got to make us a co-host. So that way it populates on our calendar as yep. well. And then Anybody we will do you make all the work for you. Anyone you make a co-host on your Facebook event, it populates on their Facebook calendar if they accept the co-host request. One last thing, please send us a blurb with it if it's not your standard Milsom event because if it's just a Milsom event, we're gonna promote it as that. But if you let us know that it's something different, if you're riding mm -hmm. horses, if you're on motorcycles doing post-apocalyptic stuff, yep. I don't know, what are some weird stuff you could do? I can't, like you're doing cops and robbers, let us know so we can share the information. Moonshine runners. Moonshine runners, that's a good one. Yeah. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this quick, quick, Commercial. Is it quick? Break. Is it, is it yeah, quick? it is. Okay. Hey, this is Sal with Third Coast Airsoft at Bone Strike, and you're watching The This is the Valken ASL AEG Tango. They come with a billet style nylon fiber receiver and ambidextrous features, including a selector lever and magazine release on both sides. Up front, it has a 12.5 inch free floating M lock rail, as well as front and rear high vis flip up sights. We recommend using a Valken 9.6 volt nickel metal hydride or a 7.4 volt lithium polymer battery, which is sold separately. The velocity is 340 feet per second and comes in two tone black and desert. Thanks for watching and please leave a review to tell us what you think. 
Welcome back to the Falcon Debrief Airsoft Live Show, episode number... 119. Are we at the event segment? We are at the event segment. Ooh, you got a graphic for me? Is that ready I to go? Do. Wait, don't, not yet, not yet. I want to okay. tease him a little bit. Okay. I want to tempt him. Okay, so... Tease. Balkan Debrief event segment is brought to you by Elite Force Air Force Air, ugh, Elite Force Airsoft and is Elite now Force Air intern- Force. <laughs> or do they have an Air Force now? I know they're well funded, but do they have like hey, Elite we have Force Space planes? Force here. I know. There you go. Yeah. Um, and is now international. This week's Elite Force product feature is the Elite Force Hater Gen 2 Limited Edition Black and Red. Is that up there yet? Is, are they is. seeing this? Oh, look at that, man. That is sexy. And I just want to say, if you're not getting licensing for this, um, you really should talk to someone over at Umbrex because I know you have a gun painted just like this in in that model. I I, think. I did. I actually I went a bit further and also painted the 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 etching for the, the hater and the branding all red and so I, I and think out, we, I outlined red in the grip. It, I think it should be the kaiju hater or the hater of kaiju or something like that. It if needs we're to gonna, be licensed the kaiju. Yeah, I know for real. But no, that is a sexy gun. Debuting tonight. Well, because if it was licensed for the kaiju, it would actually be the Jaeger hater. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Um, sorry, I didn't finish the bumper. Uh, this is one probably one of the sickest CO2 revolvers on the market. If you're a wheel gun guy and you're not rocking one of these, you're not cool. That's just how it is. The internet told me so. Um, and here's the best part, guys. Retail's coming in right at $90 MSRP. So, and it also comes with a limited edition patch. Everything you see there, you get all the discs, right? That's part of the package? No, no, no. It only, it only comes with five discs. You get five discs. Yeah. You get five discs, patch, custom painted gun, or is that more than five? No, it may come with 10. It may it come with 10. It comes with 10 discs. Yeah, That 10 is discs. a killer price point at 90 bucks. I think if you don't take advantage of this, you're dumb. Sorry. That's just how it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's hit those events. All right. And once again, if you are just joining us or you are joining us on SoundCloud at the end, I know some of you guys just want to catch events. Or you're watching us on the Valken Airsoft Europe Ooh, page. even better. We need to share more Europe events. Yes. Everything. Message Sorry. Falcon Airsoft Europe Facebook page, your Facebook event link. Everything that we are about to announce is up to date as of this moment, 723 Mountain. What's the yeah, date? Like the 12th or something? Because um, uh, we don't give the date. Yeah. Um, so, because I've actually 15, been updating uh, because uh, a couple events in Europe uh, have, have canceled. Uh, one event in the United States actually shifted an entire month. Yep. Um, so we're just trying to give you the most accurate information as possible. You ready to do this? We are ready. Okay, here we go. First graphic. <gasps> Let me get a little sippy of my beverage first. <laughs> mm, refreshing. <laughs> Coming up first, Lone Star Showdown, March 13th to the 15th. Desert Fox Airsoft event, 878 Airsoft in Wackahatsy, Texas. We've been talking about this for a while. Just so you know, there's a big... Stream in the middle, waterproof your stuff, be prepared. It gets hot out there. It's going to be a fun event. 878 has a great... No, no, a great no, 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 wait, no, no, did I get no. this wrong? You totally screwed that up. What did I screw up? You're talking about D14. Did I, did I screw that up? Never mind. Sorry. 878 is a complete... And we haven't been talking about this week. So this is brand new for this week. Did I just transpose D14 yes, and 878? Sorry. Yeah. Restart. 878. Tons of great military vehicles. Chad Holtz and company put, have it, keep a great Chad's field. Chad's going to whoop your butt. I, I get it right though. I know enough about him. I'm trying here. I just, I had a veteran moment. Is, can we call it that? Yeah. I, I just mixed up. All right. But yeah, great vehicles, good event. Please, if you haven't checked it out, this is brand new on the schedule. Check it out. It's one and of if the. You've never heard of Dareso- Desert Fox Airsoft events. They actually use an app uh, on your smartphone called the uh, Blue Fox Tracker. Yep. That actually shows where everybody is that's logged in on the app. So in. And they can actually download waypoint stuff real time. It's pretty cool. Would you say this qualifies as a good bridge event, kind of like halfway it is. between full it is hardcore a good bridge event. Yep. So yeah, this is a good bridge event if you're looking for your first event, or if you just want to have something that's not so serious. Yep. Because all of us want to play that. All right, moving on. Uh, Roar Pocket, March 14th. This is at Broken Arrow. No, this is a Broken Arrow event at Zulu 24 in New Windsor, New York. Uh, Planet Airsoft seemed to like Zulu 24 a lot, so that was a good place to play. Yep. So and also we had a recommendation from uh, New Breed Paintball and Airsoft, right? That's that correct. was also a, a thumbs up. Yeah, recommendation. so this is uh, one of the younger companies, Broken Arrow uh, Milson. So please check them out. Please support them. Um, or I'm sorry, Broken Arrow Events yeah. Bay. Please, please support them. Please show up. That's how you get more events in your area. You show up and you. You give them your business. That's right. Um, coming over after that, we got Red Dawn 10, March 15th. This is a mere tactical event. 
God, Mir has just gotten busy. Like it's like every third event coming up. Um, Badlands Paintball Field in Crete, Illinois. Uh, Mir Tactical, good event. Um, this was a full up milsim, um, not an immersion milsim, so you don't need to have you know everything the same. But this is going to be your next level up from your Avalon or your AMS Light or your uh, Desert Fox events. A little more serious. Uh, coming up after that, we got Apocalypse Five, March fourteenth. Other World Milsim event at Skirmish Paintball in Albrightsville. Like Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. You, you have to slow down, Albrightsville, Sorry. because our we got a lot. Our podcast listeners don't see the graphic, you so you have to slow down. Sorry, Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. Um, this is the famous Paul Whitman and Jackal Tackle. Did that I get that right correct. this time? Yep. I always mix that up with the other one in that area. Sorry, Paul. It's not personal. It's I'm. I'm just not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Otherworld puts on really good events, smaller company. They're very regional, so if you're not from the Northeast, you're probably not familiar with them. But um, I've had tons of good recommendations from all kinds of people who've yeah. been to their events, so please check he them out. He just posted that he has uh, tan and green uh, hoodies that have the Apocalypse nice. uh, 5 logo on them. He has a limited amount so that that's he's like going to bring to the event. But if they run out of the event, you can still place your order at the event, and he will ship them to you once the event is complete. And also, Paul Whitman, friend of the show. Been a guest, I think, at least once, if not twice. Dude, what does staff do and where he only shows up until now? Because he has a job. That means he's he has to like get off work. He has to go pick the kids he up. He works till 7? Well, it depends. Like, he, he runs uh, the... Um, the fleet for Denver, Denver, like the railroad company in Denver. So, like, he's kind of always on call ish. Oh, okay. So, like, you know, if a truck right. breaks down, you, and has you, to go to a vendor. That you kind get of a stuff. Staff. He's a good guy. And also, <laughs> we work all weekend too. So he's, you know, he's a little tired. Okay. He, you know, he, he at least watches it and replay. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, welcome staff. Love you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, Black Hawk Down, March twenty first. Cobra, wait, a Cobra Airsoft Legion event <laughs> at Blast Camp Paintball and Airsoft. I finally got to meet those guys. Yep. This is a uh, retired Nike missile base. Ooh. So that's where they used to hide the shoes that would fly over to Russia and blow them up? Yep. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really rad. I've seen some pictures and videos from this place. Um, it's on my list of places I need to check out. Plus, I need to do a Cobra event just so I can walk around screaming Cobra everywhere I go. <laughs> Rich Gully in Arizona, he says, you know, the show actually you know, starts at 5 now in, in Phoenix because of, of daylight. Because they don't do daylight savings in, in Arizona. Oh, daylight savings. Why do we do that? It's another made-up thing we do here in, like, like, like the Imperial system. Can we just well, use kilometers? Uh, well, no, I think, I, think, I think it's strategic. So, like right now... Uh, Arizona can share the same time zone with California. Hmm. But in the fall, they're like, you know what? We, we like the mountain states more. We're going to share the time zone with like Colorado and New Mexico. What if it's secretly a plan that if someone invades the U.S., every clock they look at, they won't understand because they don't have daylight savings in a lot of the world like <laughs> Russia and China. So they will be confused about how well their invasion is going or not going well because they can't read any of the clocks. Yeah, I don't know. Mm, deep thinking right there, yep. boys. <laughs> anyway. What's next? Uh, what was I on? Apocalypse? So we're no. on... No, Black Hawk Down, Cobra, we covered that. Yep. Uh, Blast Camp, pretty legendary place. If you haven't been there, it should be on your list. Uh, coming up after that, Operation Stonebreaker 2020. This is this month. March 20 to the 22nd, Third Coast event at GTI in Barnwell, South Carolina. And of course, Valken is a proud sponsor of this event. Um, in addition to that, you'll be seeing this guy's lovely face. If you're on the podcast, I'm pointing at my partner here. Mm. He will be there live and in person. And do you have Planet Airsoft traveling with you as well? Yes, I got Yitz mm, from Planet, Planet Airsoft. Airsoft. So if you want to see kind of a different crew, I won't be there, unfortunately. I get to miss out on a 20-hour drive because I'm not going to Jersey for that meeting. Yeah. So you know. Skip the next one. Go to ACS. Okay. ACS Air Airsoft, 70-year anniversary, March 28th. Um, ACS, ACS Airsoft is the host in West Paducah, Kentucky. Vulcan is also a proud sponsor of this. Um, this is their eight, seven year anniversary. So if you like have been doing this for seven years and getting it right, probably they got a good product. Bro, um, bro, 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 bro. Guess who just joined the chat, bro? Is, is it Bo? Is it Bo? Bo? Oh my is gosh. It Bo? It's, it's my favorite. Is, is Bo going to learn? Three quarter size human being. Is Bo going to learn that we got some clothing sent his way? Some clothing for Bo from Trooper? Triple clothing for Bo? 
No. Dude, why do you have to? Because he has LBX clothing. Why do you have to like poke the bear? I think he might be. T- is he the right size for LBX, or is he below their sizing? Is that does that work? Oh jeez! <laughs> if you want to, if you want to smack him though, you totally, you totally can. Bro, I love you to death. I know LBX is a fantastic product. They make some of the <laughs> best bags out there. They make that chest rig that everybody wants to have a piece of. That three three bag chest rig. Yep. Madness. So no, I have nothing but love for you guys. <laughs> oh my God. I only roast the ones I love. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, by the way, um, ACS will have a really a rad local barbecue food truck on site. So if you don't want to worry about humping your food in or bringing food, See there's going to be a food barbecue truck. barbecue is to us? Yes, very important. We list it right there. And also I want to apologize to any members from that town. The barbecue, the ham festival is in Katie's, not Paducah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next town over, guys. Yep. It's, it's, it's like, you know, a mile away. Uh, coming up after that, we got, here we go. Tresian and Copan. Ooh, do you like that? Rolls right off the tongue now. It does. Um, this is going to be March 27th to the 29th. Centramillion. Centurion. <laughs> Milsim event at Arena Training Facility. They're going to waterboard me if I ever make it to one of their events, aren't they? They are. <laughs> They're going to mess me up. They Blakely, are. Georgia. Uh, guys, this Centurion, if you haven't heard about them, are unique. They do... Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what the best equivalent. Like maybe like Robin Sage airsoft style would be the way to describe it. Like basically full immersion. I don't actually know what happens. I'm just going off secondary because no one will talk to me about it. But it is interesting. If you want to do some wild off the wall stuff, it's a unique company to go do stuff with. And the guys I know that go there are pretty rabid about it. Whisper, whisper. Also Turk will, yep. you know, and <laughs> will argue with anybody who has a problem with Centurion. William Soto. William, William. Soto from... Overwatch Tactics just sent me a meme of bro saying, bra. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me, Bo. That was, that was Soto. You got to get on him for that. I'm just saying. That was all him. Roast the ones we love, and it happens. <laughs> all right. What do we got going on next? Uh, yeah, sorry. This is going to be in Blakely, Georgia. This is their original home event. Um, please check it out. It's got a continuing storyline that's been going for like five or six years now or something like that. Pretty rad. Um, coming up after that, Operation Castle, March 27th to the 29th. Lion Claws is hosting this event at a prison in Carson City. Three factions, cops, or sorry, guards, uh, prisoners, cartel. They're going to be doing some interesting, weird stuff. John Lou puts on a great show along with his people. Please don't miss the opportunity to play in a unique location like that. Um, also, John, I saw you on the range today. You're in Tiger Stripe at the range. What's up with that, dude? I mean, like I, I've heard immersion, but I mean, I love I love your your dedication to it. But dude, <laughs> coming up after that, um, we got Descent Homeland, March twenty eighth to the 29th. Ooh, Oh, we're in Western Europe. Yeah, we're We've in hit Western, Western Europe. Europe. Uh, this is a 24-hour milsim hosted by Gunman Airsoft in Eversley, United Kingdom. So this is—is is this our first English event that we're announcing on the show? Yep. Ooh, I'm I'm, I'm kind of honored. It's first mm-hmm. for everything. Um, where's this at? Evers uh, Gunman Airsoft. Do you know anything about them? Ever, Eversley is just northeast, just outside the borders of uh, London. Okay, so this is still relatively suburban England kind yes, of thing. Yes. Okay. Correct. So, yeah, check it out. Uh, please support your local field. And once again, if you're listening from Europe, tell everybody you know to make us co-hosts on events so we can promote this stuff. Maybe there's someone going overseas for business or on vacation. They might just decide to come to your event. You yep. don't know how this could benefit you. Please let us help you out. Um, going after that, Operation Southern Watch, April 4th and the 5th, a mere tactical event at the Hendry Correctional Facility in Immacoli, Florida. And also, the infamous or famous, what would you say, infamous or famous? Famous. Famous. Silo Entertainment will be there. Gilly suited up with his, I mean, God, he has a collection of guns he uses. I think yep. he's got like a full auto Silo just side does some side good arm. stuff. He's got, a, he's got a whole sniper thing going on, so check that out. Um, coming up after that, Southern Front 2, April 3rd to the 5th. American Milsim is hosting this at D14. Sorry, 878. I am sorry. This is the one with the deep creek. It's kind of a rough terrain. Be prepared. 
Um, and we do have a subject matter expert in the chat. I mean, we actually got several. We got Bo, we got Soto, we got... So if you need to Woody, know anything about Rich. this event, you have literally all of the AMS command staff that's hanging out here right now, including like most of the people who own AMS. So if you have questions and you can't get them answered otherwise, this is direct to the source right and here. And James Hurst says, Southern Front, so ready for this. And James Hurst just got a brand new cyclone grenade to throw Did in he? those buildings. Wait, wait, he just, he just won it? No. Oh, did he? Or he just buy it? I, I was he, confused. He won it in a previous show. Oh, that's show. right. I forgot he's one of our previous winners. Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't, you tr- you tried this stuff, not me. bad action photography, Brandon Woolbanks will mm. also be at Southern Front. I have to say bad action. High five. You took some fantastic pictures of me at uh, Coverhead last year, and I appreciate that. It takes a lot. And that's to sh- very hard to do. Yeah, it takes a lot to shine a turd, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Southern Front is part of the AMS local series, guys. Um, nice bridge event. Um, it's a great way to experience some really top-notch game design and top-notch players at your local field. They're bringing the show to you, so take advantage of it. If you're someone who's thinking about moving up to that national-level player, this is a great way to get exposure to what that's actually like and see if you're ready for an all-day event. I think it's like an eight-hour evolution. They go all day. Yes, one day. Go all day. Yeah. So, uh, and please, be, if it's this is your first time going all day. Water, 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 food. You need to be, it's a lot of energy you're burning Because th- this is getting in the beginning of April. Yep. You're going to think it feels nice and cool. You still need to hydrate. Yep. Still need to hydrate. Coming up after that, we got Operation Fallen Kingdom, April 3rd to the 5th in the Northeast region, Lion Claws event at Ford Monmouth and Tinton Falls. This is going to be held in like the admin area for a shutdown base. So basically like chow halls and barracks and stuff you're fighting through. Sounds yep. really fun. And Cerberus Airsoft is... They're almost done with their technical. Oh, that, is that going to be there? That's going to be. By the way, if you guys have, if you guys are on Instagram, head over to Cerberus Airsoft New Jersey. They have a video on there of their new turret they just finished mm-hmm. on top of their truck. And speaking as a guy who built a pretty rad technical back in the day, I'm very impressed. They, they even some got good the work. attention of American Milson. American <sighs> Milson saw it and they commented. So be wise out there. There might be some new danger coming down the road, full of BB, yeah. fast BB attack. <laughs> but yeah, high five, guys. You guys did a great job on that if you're watching. Um, where am I at? Oh, Cape Fear Rebellion 2, April 3rd to the 5th. Black Ops Airsoft is hosting this and it's also... Wait. Oh, no. This is Black Ops. This is Black Ops North Paintball Carolina. and Paint, Airsoft. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is one of the 9,000 places named in the similar fashion. Please do not mix mm-hmm. them up. This is Black Ops Paintball in Fayetteville, North Carolina, or as we like to call it, Vietnam. 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 So once again, I want to say hi to all those suckers that are falling out of the sky at Fort Bragg. How's it going? You're suckers. <laughs> um, <laughs> and not because you're at Fort Bragg. Well, that sucks, but mostly because you agreed to jump out of airplanes for no reason. I don't know. We haven't jumped on anything in like 50 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cape Fear Rebellion 2, 3rd to the 5th. Uh, Black Ops Airsoft is hosting, and they are the home field in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Airsoft junkies will be on site, so if you're looking for all that They'll airsoft goodness, yep. they will be providing all your retail needs. And please say hi to Sam and tell him he's awesome for bringing his show. And Lucky Branch, Lucky Branch down those, there as well. All yep. those folks. So yeah, they just uh, does uh, Lucky work airsoft for junkies airsoft? just confirmed that they will be at uh, Cape Fear. Wait, is, is VFA going to be there? Because you said Lucky. Does he work for Airsoft Junkies or? I don't know. I thought he was with VFA. I hey, I know a lot of information, but I don't know who works for who all the time. Okay. Lucky's a cool guy. Hi, anyway. Like, like <laughs> Bo Silva, he is an actual ambassador for Core Water. True fact. Moving on. Challenge. Judges. <laughs> judges. <laughs> um, Kankaki Incur- Kankaki Incursion Kinkaki. 2. Kankaki Incursion 2. All right, I, I'm going to apologize once again. Actually, Staff's wife called and gave me a voice message while we were doing the show last time to shame me because she's from Kankaki or that area. Uh, Incursion 2, April 4th to the 5th, Mere Tactical. Once again, Mere Tactical. Come on, guys. Take a break. Um, th- this, this doesn't include all their paintball events. Yeah, either. I know. It's ridiculous. Go home for a little while. And they're, they're, they're more of a bridge event company. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, did I say that last time? I thought you, I said. No, you said you made them more of a Milsim okay, company. My, but I no, thought they were a little more no, towards that. They're no, bridge event? Okay. They're, they're a bridge event. Sorry, and I'm not talking trash. I just want to give you guys good yes. information. Thank you for the correction. Um, 
Yeah, Mere Tactical, Dog Food Factory in Kankakee, Illinois. Please remember, uh, this is pre-registration only. They wanted us to emphasize that. If you don't have a ticket, don't show up. They're not letting you in. I'm sure this has something to do with insurance or site restrictions that they have to, you know, the rental agreements. Please don't mess it up for them. Just don't show up and expect to get on the field and pitch a hizzy fit. I'm sure there's a reason they're saying this because it's happened before. Yep. Um, coming up after that, we got Shine Wars. Oh, that's what you were talking about. Broken Jar, April 4th. This is at a Chickens Tactical event at Command Decision War Game Center in Taylorsville, North Carolina. That's quite a quite a spot. They got tanks yep. and all kinds of stuff there, right? Yep, yep. So that's definitely a place you want to get to play. Coming up after that, City of Chaos, April 19th. This is a mass... No, this, or so, wait. this is Twig Humphrey. He's putting on this event. Oh, okay. And it's at Missouri I, Airsoft and Simulation Site. Sorry, I just saw it in the order it normally is. It's out of, it's the, the format's a little different on this one, so it messed me up. You know, I do I'm, that on purpose. Because I'm like Ron Burgundy. I'll just read anything. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I'm going to get to the end of this section and be like, I like weird things with feet. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Twig, Twig's actually watching the show, so... Yeah, Twig, once, Twig is hosting. Um, this is going to be held at Missouri Airsoft and Simulation Site in Lawson, Missouri. So that is a pretty legendary field that's been around for quite a bit. I think actually that was Nigel's home field for a while, right, before yep. he went down to uh, yep. Elite Force? So now you're going to have to scroll back up to the one I told you to skip. Okay. Uh, nope, I'm getting there and getting big, there. Big air. Nope, it's right, no, right at the there, bottom. Bennett. Big Airsoft. All right. So this is one of the ones that was literally just moved to a new date. Okay. Like, 20 minutes before the show started. So this is the big airsoft game. It was on March 22nd. Now it's been moved to... April 19th. April 19th. Um, This is going to be hosted by East Coast Airsoft at Robin Hood Paintball in Havre de Grace, Maryland. That's my old stomping grounds. Yep. And and if you're wondering why it didn't move, read the paper, watch TV. Just Google Governor Hogan, Maryland. It'll come up. There's a whole proclamation. It's it's super hoity-toity. Yep. Um, but but it's it's because of the, the the world pandemic right now, so there is a legitimate reason why it got moved. Can we use the word panic demic instead of pandemic? Because no. that's what I feel is more appropriate. <laughs> People are panicking over. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> People are being silly. Wait, can we get Woodcock to say the uh, that hashtag that he's not supposed to say? What's the hashtag? Did I miss that? Uh, we won't. We won't. Do Ro- I know Robo's know? watching. I don't want to upset Robo. Shh, Robo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of sad because Robo is one of my favorite Canadians. I wish David was in here, Angry Canadian, because I have all kinds of Warhammer stuff to talk to him about because I'm officially dived far into okay, that. No, okay, no, 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 no. okay. All right, Sorry. No, no, hold on. Now you're getting people mixed up again. Okay. Angry Canadian. I thought that was David Fisher. Is Jessen Bateman, who oh. is a aesthetician down in Jacksonville, Florida. He's the medical dude. Sorry, David is Dice. David Fordis is Dice Airsoft up in Canada. Okay. Sorry. That he's the one that does the Warhammer. Sorry, I tried. I was trying to connect with the audience, but apparently he just won't let me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, this got, Havre de Grace, it got moved. Um, please check out their, uh, uh, what's the name of the company? East Coast Airsoft's paint site again. They'll keep you up to date with any movement or going on. But please, guys, just be flexible about this stuff. There's, this is going to happen more and more as the year goes on, whether it's warranted or not. People will take the precautions they're going to take. So we just got to roll with it and keep updated. Just assume nothing is certain right now. And, yep. you know, just keep updated. And that's why we're doing this. Um, Descent Homeland. Nope. Wait, did I go too far Battle down? Battle at the Depot. Battle at the Depot? No, go down. Oh, there's you're... Kankaki. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Uh, Battle, at the, Depot Battle at the Depot 2. There you April go. April 24th to the 26th. M. Sato is hosting, hosting this. <laughs> <laughs> the Seneca Army Depot in Seneca, New York. Uh, good location, good company. Enough said. That's all I got to say. I don't know enough about that area. Tom O'Rourke, team. he puts on a good show. I've just heard nothing but good stuff. So check it out if you're in the area. Um, also, we had a local recommendation from a caller a couple weeks ago, too. So yes. that's always a good one. Yep. Um, they are not paid to call in whatsoever. We would never encourage paid advertising on our show. Yeah, that was actually a referee from EMR <laughs> Event Park. I know, kind of crazy. Yep. Huh? Small world. Anyway, uh, and this is one of my personal favorites. Second annual VFA charity game, April 24th to the 26th. Uh, Veterans for Airsoft event at the Sherwood Forest in LaPorte, Indiana. Valken is a proud sponsor of both this event and Veterans for Airsoft. If you guys don't know who they are, they get veterans out, excuse me, to get them out of their, you know, 
get them out in social yep. again, get them doing something, get them into a community. And the reason I support this group so much is that I was not one of their success stories, but this community is my success story. Success success story <laughs> in transitioning from being kind of a hermit veteran to someone who has people so to interact with. They so. just received our our prize package. Did they? What's in it? Any good stuff? Yeah, it was a uh, desert. A Tango rifle with Ooh. a Desert RDA 30 optic. Nah. A Desert Marin's stock. Is this all in like one package yeah, together? Yeah, five extra, five pack of Desert so not only mid-cap magazines. You get like and, the gun, but you get all the upgrades and, and goodies with it. Lithium-ion battery and lithium-ion oh, charger. Nice! And so, actually, I'm a big fan of those new ASLs. They're snappy. Yeah. snappy. And I have confirmed with Mr. Flux himself, April 9th, Thursday, VFA is going to be back on the show to give us an update because <gasps> we had them on like the first year we aired. I missed uh, that. Back I in the day. I didn't get to interview. I didn't, I'm sorry, And Freddy. so it's been a couple of years. He's going to give us an update. But April 9th, mark your calendars. Freddie Flux is going to be on There's going the to be show. a lot of shit talking about the Navy that show. So be prepared, guys. <laughs> Just brace yourself. There's two Army guys versus one Navy guy. It's going to go all downhill about 20 minutes in. Um <laughs> Coming up after that, we got the Sheboygan Sanctuary, Sanctuary Incursion 2, April 25th to the 26th. Once again, Mere Tactical. I'm tired of saying that name. No, I'm not. I'm kidding. Um, at the Abandoned Asylum in Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin. Uh, once again, this is a bridge event um, up in the Wisconsin area. If you're there, come check it out. Get your game on. Operation Dragon Road 7, May 2nd, 20, May 2nd to the 3rd. Third Coast Airsoft event at Team Airsoft to Field in Dawsonville, Georgia. We'll be there. We'll be there. And Valken is a proud su- proud sponsor. This is actually going to be my first trip of the year because we got snowed out, and then we got scheduled and, out. I know. And then, but we're gonna we're gonna bring the Zing chest. Oh, oh that's right. I forgot we haven't cracked that open yet. Yeah, oh, that's the right. Zing chest. And this is going to be the first day view of what are we what are we calling it? The compound, the yes. palace, the compound. Well, no, I mean, no. I'll be at Stonebreaker. Yeah, but it, it's not. It's. It, it's a team thing. No, they're it's, still getting. They're still getting the compound. They're getting the compound. Ground. Okay, cool. Just want to make yeah. sure. Is it a compound without me? That's more what I was saying. I was it's still about a that. compound. You're not part of the building. <laughs> I'm holding it up like Atlas. You oh didn't know God. that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving yeah, on. <laughs> please come check us out. We'll be there. Um, we got both. Anola, we got Anola Gay, Valken, and Elite Force all on display. Tons of great products. Got the whole thing. Come hang out. Grab a cold water. Listen to some music. Hang out with us. And we're doing movie nights on Friday. So yep. keep that in mind. Um. Oh, where was I? Downfall 6. Down, Okay. Downfall 6, um, May 9th to the 10th. This is a Otherworld Milsom event at EMR Event Park in New Milford, Pennsylvania. We are? EMR. That's what I'm talking about. Um, legendary Field. This should be one of your bucket list fields if you have a list of bucket list fields. They have the biggest recreational castle in America. They and have I, three of them. Three of them. One of them is like three acres by three acres. It's huge. Um, 11 separate fields, urban, outdoor, terrain, um, city, CQB, what I really anything like, you want they got. What I really like about there is the the support structure. So they have primitive campsites. Nice. They have RV hookup sites. And they have 30 bunk houses that you could you can rent one that's got... Uh, bunks and power. So really, you just bring your sleeping bag and. and so this would stuff. be perfect if, like, you have a bunch of buddies that are looking for like a road trip airsoft weekend. Yep. And you don't necessarily have all the camping equipment that some of us weirdos have. Yep. You can just show up because those bunk houses they'll they'll sleep eight people. And if you bring in a box air conditioner, you just put it in the window and you're good to go, right? Yep. Yeah, you, nice and air conditioned. Mm-hmm. So that sounds like a fun trip. So don't be afraid to and travel a couple hours. And what's cool, it's all on one road, so everybody has their fire pits, and you can just walk down, and you just basically bounce from like oh, it's like, one uh, fire it's, like pit re- it's like renting a house at Copperhead, where just everybody's out in but the street hanging out. But it's much, much closer. So you don't even have to like walk down the street. You just throw BBs at your buddy and oh, say, yeah, hey, bring me a beer. So you can just shout out like, hey, what's up? Just open your windows and party from building to building. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, coming up after that, we got Conflict 6, May 15th to 17th. Cobra. Cobra! Airsoft Legion event at Blast Camp Paintball and Airsoft in Hobart, Indiana. Blast Camp's well-known. Rad people uh, run in that place. It's it's also probably should be on your list of interesting, maybe not bucket list, but right up their fields in the middle of America. Um, and, of course, you get to scream Cobra in everything you do if you're a... G.I. Joe fan from the 80s. I'm talking to you, Timmy Green. 
That's who I'm talking to. Um, coming up after that, we hold got, on. Oh, hold on. Did I miss so, something? You know, there's no secrets here on 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 the debrief. Too tall. Tom Hall asked Bo from American Milsim word on anything new for 2020, and Bo goes working on a few. Shh. So you heard it here first. Okay. AMS is working on something new for 2020. So, so real quick, what would be like the list of you know super secret places that no one's gotten yet? Like what's what's the holy grail that no one's gotten yet? There is no holy grail. I don't know. I I would say like I want someone to to go to JRTC like uh, Fort Polk and some, and use the box for an event. That would be insanely fun. I think that's that's the dude. Proposal. I've done so many rotations at military sites. I'm just like I'm I'm over military sites. I like Polk, man. It's in the woods. It's you know, people are going to fall down and die from heat exhaustion. I'll be okay. Oh my it's my gosh. kind of spot, man. Next. I will outlast all of you. Next. Only the strong survive. <laughs> <laughs> um, where am I? Dark Emergency? Yep. Okay. Dark Emergency 6, May 14th to the 17th at Airsoft held an event in Malwinkel. Malwinkel. Malwinkel, Germany. Yep. I, I was close. I was more of a, more of a Bavarian pronunciation with that. Um, <laughs> These are some really rad dudes. Um, I got to meet them at SHOT Show very briefly. This guy or Max to my Albright. left has known them for what? About 10, 15 years Since now? Since 2008. Yeah, so that's like 10, mm -hmm. 15 years now. Um, for these my guys, Team Red Dragon days. Yeah, this is, this is the place where this guy on my left got his start in Airsoft. And if you guys don't know how regular... If you guys have never been to Germany... Germans like regulations. So it's really hard to put on stuff like this in Germany. It's not like you just get some random insurance and rent a site and invite everybody out like here in America. 72 pages in their constitution on how to make chocolate. Yep. And just four saying. rules on what makes beer. So, yep. you know. Um, so keep in mind, if they've been keeping this event going for this many years, these guys it's have their shit together. And if you're in this part of Europe or you're looking for an adventure, I've heard nothing but great things about what these guys and, do. And uh, Malwinkel's up. up near uh, Berlin. It's in. It's like an industrial park type thing, like kind of like an abandoned. No, it's like an old bunker place. Yeah, so it has like that kind of post-apocalyptic rundown. Oh, it's feel. all concrete. Oh, all concrete. I'm, I'm getting more jealous as we more yeah. we talk about it. Uh, but yeah, please show them your support if you're in Europe or planning on being there around this time. Uh, coming up after that, Operation Urgent Fury, May 16th to the 17th, Mere Tactical once again at Seneca Army Depot in Romulus, New York. Seneca's hey, getting popular. Hey, they're helping pay the bills, man. I know. I'm just saying. I'm teasing you guys. You get I'm not serious when I do this. I just <laughs> like teasing you. <laughs> coming up after that, we got Lion Claws X, I, X. Yeah, 19 or something like that. 19. I don't know. It's less than the Super Bowl. I know that. <laughs> Total War. Uh, May 22nd to the 24th, uh, Pacific Le Region event, Lion Claws event is, of course, the host at George Air Force Base in Victorville, California. Lion Claws, again. See, I do it to everybody. Um, <laughs> this is, if you've seen the videos of the old post housing from like uh, that shut down a couple years ago and it's fallen apart, um, this is the spot. If you guys are going, just be aware there's all kinds of nasty exposed stuff. But apparently, it's very that also makes it very dynamic because there's like holes in the wall and stuff's falling down. And I think this is the one where House Gamers fell through the roof um, in his video when he was there last time or something. He was up in a rafter hanging out shooting people and he moved and he actually like fell through the rafters or something. So um, please play it safe while you're out there. Just be aware of your environment. It is a game. Don't push it if you don't have to. But also an awesome, awesome site to go to. Uh, coming up after that, we got Eastern Front, May 23rd to the 24th. This is an American Milsim local at Zulu 24 in New Windsor, New York. Zulu 24 has many, many thumbs up from everybody we talked to. I haven't personally been there, so I don't want to speak out of turn. Have you been to Zulu yet? No, I have not been to Zulu yet. But it's on the list. Um, so this is a, once again, an AMS local, a bridge event, where they're bringing all that AMS goodness to you so that yes. you can... Try it out without it, traveling across the country. It was a, a bummer that Eastern Front um, had to get postponed uh, at the last minute uh, last year. So the fact that the, the East Coast is now getting some AMS love at Zulu 24 for Eastern Front is a good thing. Speaking of which, we didn't have a ticket update on Centurion. Are they sold out now? Or is that... I forgot to check that. It wasn't. I can't list. tell you. You can't? Oh, well then. I guess you're not going if you're not going. <laughs> Guess you just got to find out then. Uh, so yeah, uh, please support them if you're looking for uh, to see if you want to dip your toe into national level airsoft. 
please come out for this. It's the best. It's it's a much lower price point. It's a much lower investment of time because it sucks to spend a couple hundred bucks on a ticket, drive cross country, buy a bunch of stuff you need for the event, and then get halfway through Saturday and be like, this kind of sucks. I want to go get lunch. So you probably don't want to learn that the hard way. This is a great way to figure out if it's for you. Yep. Uh, coming up after that, we have Bristol Land Rush, uh, May 30th to the 31st. Overwatch Tactics event, Black Ops Bristol in Wisconsin, famous location, uh, has produced such wonderful friends of the show as Ryan Dean and that whole Nemesis crew, the Salt Siders, who, I mean, they are the sweetest people I, I know in Airsoft. And if- Corey Salt Sider is now the new poster child for a lot of our branding. Is he going to be the face of the Falcon for a while? Yep. He didn't is. know it? Ooh, wow. Yep. Ooh. Oh, he knows it now. Does he know it now? Yeah, he, he, I, had, to, he had to sign the writer for it. Oh, I thought you were just going to like have it start showing up on Facebook. Yeah, we, like, Sorry, we, you released the pictures a while ago. We basically had to open you know, <laughs> a, a savings account for Little Salt Cider. And in, in the Bahamas? That's so what he wanted us to pay into Like that. a third-party account in the Bahamas, no taxable, so that like you know <laughs> we keep that separate. So just between us and him. You know, Uncle Sam, you don't need to know. Uh, Yeah, uh, Bristol's a legendary place. It's an amazing field to play at. They have so many wonderful props and um, things to take cover behind. They have a full city with gas station, downed aircraft, and all that stuff. It is a great place to play. And uh, once again, Overwatch is a very unique provider because they just do stuff different. Um, This is going to be... This is the game where they're going to have the unlockable prizes at no, the checkpoints. No, no, no. Yeah, so this is going to be at the checkpoints. You control the checkpoint. You get stuff. Like Valken is sponsoring, uh, I believe, CP4. I get them mixed up. But so if you actually control uh, the Valken checkpoint, you actually get ammo. The Soto Clause comes yeah. around and unlocks the box. Three O's. Not, not the two fives, two O crap. Those are Three pricey. O's. I just bought some of those. That's like 30, yep. 40 bucks for the BBs right there. That's right. You know um, my price. Anola Gay is sponsoring a checkpoint. I mean, it's it's really cool. So you actually, I mean, you're not just taking ground for like points or for time. You actually get something in return, which is actually pretty cool. And it's really nice, their format. It's a lot of kind of make your own adventure type stuff. So, you know, you can go with the game lots flow of props. or go against the game flow. You just lots want to take props. pictures with their props, pretending to be your gentleman parts or whatever, because no one, everybody does that. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a unique place to play and a unique company to play with. Once again, Valken is a proud sponsor of Overwatch Tactics and everything they do. Much love to all you guys. Brian, Cookie, Brad. Wait, are they doing Brian. a Halo run at Land Rush? I don't know. Are they? <gasps> yes, they are. They're doing a Halo run. They're doing Helos, Halo runs at Land Rush. Now I remember the post. I see a red helicopter. Sorry, yep. Soto. I forgot Sorry about, about that. that. Halo Boom. runs at Land Rush. We forgot yeah, that. Yeah, Jason Terry kicked me in the butt in the chat yeah. and reminded me. Uh, Brad, Brian, and Will put on a great um, game flow. In fact, but don't forget about the muscle behind the faces. Oh, I, I was getting right Amy there. Amy Soto. I was about to say, and she's, once again, thank the, you for Amy Soto cheese. for making the actual business decisions that keeps that organization yep. running and providing. Because we know how hard it is to keep your husband focused. We do. We support you. Amy. We know you have a big stick at the house. That's how you do it. Yep. You just hit him and follow him around and <laughs> make him do stuff. I, I, I know. He told me. It's yep. okay. <laughs> so please check that. I mean, tickets went on sale this week. So get no, on. last week. Last week. Yeah. Okay. Tickets went on sale last week. So. Get on that. I have a feeling, I think Overwatch sold out twice over again. Didn't they open up some more tickets at one point, the last event they did? Okay, he keeps mixing up. Mix the, it up? That was Southern Front American okay. Milson. It sold out pretty quick. Stop trying to remember stuff. Just st- I'm trying. stick with the teleprompter. Well, half of your notes are wrong. <laughs> the ones that are on purpose are for you. <laughs> You're not supposed to add them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, and finally, um, Operations Hornet's Nest, June 6th to the 7th at Miz- a Mass Airsoft hosted event at the Old Airfield in Rantoul, Illinois. This is a 100% Vulcan sponsored joint. Your, yours truly and his lovely partner will be there the entire weekend. It's an awesome location. It's an old uh, airfield, I think. So some hangars, a bunch of outdoor stuff, maybe some woods. I've been promised a lot. And it's a big boy Milsom event. Yeah. So there's a premier event. I like that name. Yeah. So we've been covering events uh, through the first weekend in June. Uh, once we get through March, then we'll extend into the first weekend in July. So that's how we kind of shift. But this is airsoft season. That was 30 events. Uh, two of them came out of Europe. Is there any There's place that you can go to on. to find this list other than us? 
No, seriously. Like, is well, there any other place? I was you supposed to live? share the events on the Alliance pages last Friday, but I will get to it tomorrow for sure. So this is the only place you can find this amount of airsoft event information. One place is more exactly. what I'm getting at. Yep. yep. So you heard it here you first. Correct. Please share correct. with all your friends so they know where to go this season and they're not lost. Yep. And doing the same three events over and over again because that gets old year after year. <laughs> so we, we just want to thank our sponsors, Enola Gay. There's another one. They Elite Force. Elite Force, that's right. Elite Force. Rad Elite Force. Oh, can we bring that hater back up real quick before we go? Oh, my goodness. I love that thing, man. That is so sexy. You, just bring you, that up. You, can, you, you, can you do that? Hold on. Do we have Do we have the technology? There oh. we go. Just We'll just make that the outro right there. Look at that. Yep. Just as we go. That is the Kaiju Jaeger hater. The Jaeger hater. That is the Kaiju license Jaeger hater. If you find us while we're out and about... And you can get this guy to sign your Jaeger hater. I got a prize for you. I'm I, serious. I I'll back it up right now. Always got a silver sharpie. Always got a silver sharpie. Silver sharpie. If he, if you show me, show me this guy's signature, I got swag for you. Yeah. So, uh, live viewers, again, thank you for watching us each and every week on Thursdays uh, on the Falcon Airsoft Facebook page, and for our European followers that watch us on Monday nights on the Falcon Airsoft Europe page. Hi, how's uh, it going? Yep. And SoundCloud, SoundCloud. We forget you. We love SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Oh, we're loving it. I, 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 I want to be at 250. That's my goal. I want to be at. No, actually, no, we're going to 2500. Yeah, we're going to get beyond yeah, there that. We go. So, so yeah, please share. We love it. our SoundCloud. Thank listeners. you so much. If you guys and you guys are listening on SoundCloud and not watching the show, if there's something that doesn't make sense to you guys, something that's not translating properly, please throw some comments down there so we can fix those problems and yep. make this more friendly when we do our SoundCloud edit for you yep. afterwards. So. Don't forget, join the Falcon Alliance. Yep. Arrive, raise hell, leave. leave. We'll see you next week. And don't cough on your friends. You wouldn't have got the new got the bus. But there's only one guaranteed way you can have peace, and you can have it in the next second. Surrender. I didn't think you had it in you. I'm your huckleberry. We will not go quietly into the night. It is your killer instinct which must be harnessed. If you expect to survive in combat, you want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Remember this day, man. Or it will be yours for all time. What keeps you awake at night? Nothing. I keep other people awake at night.